Well, um, after six, and we have two select board members, so I guess let's I'd get on the roll. We got to the meeting. Yeah, got a long, long list. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda at all? I've got nothing. Okay. Any public comment? Can I just ask what the derelict properties is about? Uh, yeah, there's um, a property on um, Ainsworth Road that Michael Flynn has been concerned about for quite a while. Um, and then I uh, just got a call up towards the end of last week from uh, Russell Richardson about a neighbor of his. Um, and they're basically properties, the two properties um, are old houses that were abandoned for a long time and then they were sold. And there's people now living on the properties and it's kind of a desperate situation for could I be added to that on the way? Uh, sure. Um, are you talking about your neighbor across the road? Behind me. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's meant to be a general um, okay. discussion. Okay. Um, I didn't know if it was just because those two were on the list. Well, those are the two people that have made okay. a call, but there are other places in town yep. that um, fit the bill. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it's meant to be, I mean, Mike McGlynn has specific issues, and we'll hear those first. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just basically um, trying to figure out what the town can do about this problem. So, any other public comment at all? We just started the meeting. So. Chris isn't coming? Uh, I don't so know. I haven't heard, heard from him. I'm finding it a little bit late. Um, no other, here, no other public There was a Ford pickup out there that the lights were on and the door wasn't fully locked and I pushed it and the lights went off. So whoever did you call the light? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. You needed a spoon. <laughs> I got a jumper pack in the truck to so help me out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that for you. That's true. Yeah, I'm going to mock. Yeah, I'm going that way. I'm good. So I guess we'll approve the bills by finish signing them. Still got this meeting. many to go. Yeah, okay. All right. So we'll sign them after the meeting. Uh, so we'll come back. Um, no, here's Chris. We'll let him settle down. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the November 22nd? So um, moved. Uh, here's a second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 So there's a copy here to be signed, and we have to make sure that Robin gets those that copy one before she leaves. Okay, so it looks like we're ready for the town clerk's report. The recordings are still coming in slowly, but they're coming in. Mm -hmm. They're up today. Mm -hmm. And basically the only other thing I've been working on is helping Brandy with getting town report ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of slow right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Is any questions at all for Robin? All right. Um, so, Brandy, this is ready for the time yeah. pressure people. So it's been since November 8th since I've um, given my treasurer's report. So we're going back starting from um, November 9th in, uh, to December 13th today. Um, payroll, it's, it's um, within the bills in front of you totaling $25,302.32. AP was $1,957,091 for total expenses. Electronic transfers that came into our checking from the state, um, the pilot payment, which is the building portion, and the library ended up getting an art uh, grant for 2000 and current use came in for electronically. Um, cash receipts, we did get a check. So for the building, that's the uh, Fish and Wildlife? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep, for Buck Lake. Mm -hmm. um, there's the art grant. So we did end up getting... Um, 
a check from the state of Vermont for the land for the pilot um, of $6,343.20. Um, along with cash receipts, there was library donations, there was copies at cost, dog licenses, lecker, uh, land records recording, um, town hall rentals, vault fees, vital records, vehicle registration, and zoning permits. Delinquent taxes were $43,009.55. Um, today I transferred $24,000 over to the money market. Um, when the check was cut for the school, I had to take um, $1,898 out of the money market and put mm -hmm. it into the checking to clear the, the check for the school. Mm -hmm. So things going on with me. So town report, um, I went out for bid on having the, the town report printed. Mm -hmm. I've gotten two bids back so far. Um, one was doubled. Um, so I'm gonna, um, so a couple things. Mm -hmm. Typically we have um, Web Weaver Mm -hmm. set up our town report and including the town report and postage it was over 6,000 last year. Mm -hmm. I can get them printed and mailed for around 2,000 and our wonderful auditor John Reed is willing to set the town report up in a PDF file and send it right to wherever I need it to be printed. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at saving around four grand doing town reports this year. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, other things. Still busy working on the, the ARPA committee. I did get uh, the LCT and Regional Planning Commission to mm -hmm. agree on a date mm -hmm. that will be held January 4th at 6 p.m. in the school gym. Mm -hmm. Um, masks are required. Students mm -hmm. have to wear them. Uh, anybody that goes has to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Also, the school gave us permission to use the gym for town meeting. Okay. Same rules apply. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What else is going on in the office? Yeah. I have to finish up the Cabot Road grant. There's not much left. Okay. Re send it to you. Mm -hmm. And then um, send that one off. And I think that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, technically, this is a classroom also of the school. So in the future, um, I think we're the select board, if we're going to be using this room, we're going to be requesting that people wear masks. It's kind of a school. This is a school Students classroom. Students and it's also an after school site for children. So. I know um, that's the first that I've heard of the, the rule for using the gym. Um, and I have a feeling that um, they haven't mentioned that for the select board meetings, but knowing that this is a school classroom, I think that we will be asking people in the future to wear masks, or at least requesting it. Okay. Any questions at all for Brandy about? Randy, can you tell, can you say if any of that bill or tax money came from uh, La Flamme and South Woodbury? Mm. I would like the delinquent tax collector to answer that, but okay. no, I have not received okay. any no, money. Fine. I didn't know if you could say that. Okay. It's Thank public you. knowledge. It is public knowledge. Yeah. Any request for delinquencies, mm -hmm. I have to supply it or any one of the us. No, we haven't gotten any in from them. Okay. Um, but yeah. Thank you. All right, so next on the agenda, and we're about 15 minutes ahead. Um, so um, and I know that um, you know, Mike McGlynn initially uh, asked for the time to meet with the select board, so I'd kind of like to wait until he's here. Um, so uh, let's see. And Patty Gardner. Do we want to jump up? Just. Yeah. Touch up on the because I already talked about the ARPA a little bit. Yeah, we could we could um, go um, to the ARPA committee and then if um, we still have time, we could um, go to the town office energy audit. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. All right. 
So I kicked a list and oh our letter. Um, we haven't we don't meet until this Thursday. Um, there is a letter I um, a request. I don't know if I bounced it to you guys. I think I brought it to the our board. I emailed it to the board, but mm -hmm. yeah, nothing has been. We haven't been able to discuss it yet. Mm -hmm. um, there is a due date for the ARPA money request mm -hmm. for March first. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that that um, other towns um, and I brought before the board the ideas what they're kicking around um, mm -hmm. digitizing. Uh, records, land records, so that um, any lawyer firm can contact, get on our website and, mm -hmm. and print it out. Um, so I've asked, we've gotten quotes, we're still getting quotes, uh, from digitizing and um, updating modules for NIMREC so those flow easier. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Fire department. What about the fire department? Did you get anything from them yet? No, that's where the, our letter, the, the yeah. um, application, where everybody, I'll make it public once the board has reviewed the application. Very simple, it's just, yeah. it says organization slash group, um, purpose of the money. Um, Is that for submitting ideas to, to the, the board? Well, I think no, it's funding, to the board. Funding requests. Yeah, Correct. exactly, funding requests. So it, it'll go before you guys, and you get to make the decisions. Because okay. kind of what I'm thinking, um, you guys will collect this information, and we've kind of got to... Correct. It'll so go I think part of when you're collecting it, make sure whoever's sending it in shows you where in the guidance they feel they fit. Kind of would save us and you some time. That's basically... As far as we have guidelines we have to go Yeah, because that guidance is pretty specific. Right. So we're and the ones that say, does this fit this yeah, guideline? Okay. And if yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't. And that's just save you a lot of wheel spinning. All yeah. the questions that... <coughs> that can come up between now and there at the January 4th meeting for, for um, Kate and Grace to answer questions um, as far as the ARPA money. So, mm -hmm. this room's kind of small. Yeah. yeah. So, at the, uh, yeah, there's some chairs there, and you're welcome to sit over there. I guess um, the camera person would like to have kind of a, a window. He doesn't want a video of the back of someone's head. Okay, right. But other than that... Um, Unless it looks good without hair. I just want your face. Sure. Is, is, oh, the land records, all, uh, that means all the, the land records are going to be good. Uh, they recommend going back to the 80s. The 80s, 1980. Oh, just and forward. forward. Yeah, and to get it started. And then if we have an X, so we can go back further than that. But typically, there's not much research back that far. So. No, the fun is to do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. All the handwritten. So, at the hearing on January 4th, would that be an opportunity for uh, town residents to also. Yeah, that is the day. That's where it's at the gym, the school there. gym. Okay. Everybody will be notified mm -hmm. to come and ask. They're giving a presentation on the ARPA mm -hmm. and any questions um, that they can answer. Okay. So, like, so it kind of takes some pressure off you guys, people being able to come to answer mm -hmm. the questions that mm -hmm. fit, um, fit, yeah. the, fit the brackets. Yeah. And I know that um, you know those are those are the two entities that have been kind of designated by the state to kind of oversee these Correct. funds. Um, I wonder if it would be good for um, the town to just we have a list of uh, requests or uh, proposals for the funding to have them kind of vet that list to let us know if some things might be a little more in a gray area or if some things might be cut and dry about. Um, you know, that we could use the funding on. Do you think that would be a good thing to do to have them bet it also? Or, cause I, I, I mean, think it's going to be crunch time between now and then. I uh -huh. mean, but if we can get the, the, um, rec the letter out by Thursday, if we make a, a decision that the form is good, you guys like it, you don't need any other details on it, mm -hmm. we can put it on the website, we can send it to 
for instance, the fire department, the library, the, you know, any yeah. fund. Friends of the elementary, apart from the library, the friends of the elementary yeah. school, all those are eligible. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. All so right. once that's out. Um, I mean, I don't think we need to approve I mean, the form of the letter, do we? No, we're no, just going to, you know, they're yeah, just going to bring us stuff and we're going to say yes or no and okay. they can write the checks. So, um, so is it just for organizations or is it for individuals also? This I think it's for, the, it's for the town. I mean, if somebody, an individual has a, an idea or um, a proposal, um, it, it can be suggested. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You've um, just got to read the guidance. It's pretty specific guidance. Yeah. Just be careful with this stuff. You know, I, I think there's some things in the draft town plan. I think the planning commission has some ideas. Um, so I think it's, you know, any ideas that, that seem valid, I think, um, and, and obviously, you know, the, the committee can take a look at those and mm -hmm. let's see. It doesn't have to be a, a, an entity in town. Because there are certain, like, high priority things like PPE, which are easy, you know, mm -hmm. funding requests like that, or <coughs> lost monies that people could have gotten. Those are things I, I myself would like to fulfill mm -hmm. as quick as possible. Um, I know the library was short money. We've been short money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the type of things that are level one, they're easy, they're, cause, because our goal is not to have to pay any of this money back, so we want to make sure we're not in the gray. Right. We right. just want to be just, yeah. so we'll hit those high priority, easy to do ones first, you know, what we call low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, like the owl, that's going to benefit us here mm -hmm. at each meeting. Mm -hmm. That's stuff that you guys can agree upon to, to get right. without doing it before the board, before the big, mm -hmm. or, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I know we've been struggling with how to provide remote access to these meetings, um, and and uh, you know I think anything that we can get to uh, assist that, and then the owl is thing that several municipalities are using. Right. Now. It's a special type of camera, uh, microphone <coughs> system um, that can be used uh, through a computer, so that people. We're trying to figure out a way to access these meetings for people who don't feel comfortable coming um, in a physical setting. Um, and uh, this tool is it's called an owl because I guess it sort of looks like an owl, but it's a camera that will pretty much has a 360 degree view of the room that it's placed in. And then when somebody has a comment or a question, the camera will move and focus on them. Um, and so it'll just kind of move around the room so that whoever is taking in the meeting remotely has a sense of who asked the question um, and, uh, and can hear the discussion in the room um, entirely. And then they can also um, the, contribute to the meeting if they have a question or a comment. So we, what we're trying to do is figure out a way to um, have that remote access work both ways where um, somebody can also through a uh, um, computer and we're still trying to figure this part out whether we have a couple of laptops and there's a screen that you know might be projected with the people that are attending the meeting remotely um, and they're able to see the space where the meeting is happening so they can feel that there's part of that. Um, it's a little complicated um, but um, it is being done in other, other municipalities, so that's kind of our goal, um, to, to try to be able to provide remote access for people. So I kind of put that poor guy out of business one day. No, 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 no. Long, actually. In fact, He'll be still uh, videotaping it. Yeah, he'll still be recording the machine. Sure it'll, the meeting will actually record itself. Yeah. And um, <coughs> I've been talking a little bit with Jim and uh, Leif Goldberg about, um, you know, we had a meeting, uh, um, with uh, Chuck Batchelder, our road commissioner, who's now in Florida, and we had him on a laptop. We just used the town Zoom account, but we could barely hear him. So there is a way that um, a laptop and somebody speaking on it can be uh, hooked up somehow and amplified so they can hear better uh, in the room and so that um, we can hear them uh, better as if they were in the room. So we're, you know, it's still kind of a work in progress to figure this out. And the OWL um, device will, would definitely help that. And of course, then we have to figure out how to use the thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, any 
anything, any questions at all about the committee? Uh, Justin, do you have any comments about your, and Dennis, you're on the committee too, I believe. No. <coughs> We've only had a chance to meet once. Yeah, yes, maybe no. after the next meeting. Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. <coughs> we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I know at the last meeting, uh, yeah, Laura is here. She had a question about whether or not it was a possibility for her to be on the committee. Um, I mean, my feeling is it's up to the committee. Um, I don't know if you guys feel you need I've reached community. out to them and they were going to discuss it, I think, on Thursday. On Thursday? But okay. I am wide open to diversity and mm -hmm. asking anybody who wants to help out. Mm -hmm. I don't see a problem with that. I don't know about the board. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, get everybody's input yeah. on these things. Okay. Right. I might be a little behind, but what's the committee? I'm not at it. Um, yeah, you're way behind. It's the, oh, you're way <laughs> the American Rescue Plan Act that's giving us the, the um, two installments of the 130, 131,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. okay. So the, the committee is... is 131,000 times two. Times right. Times right. Times next this year and year next year. Um, to bring ideas to the select board. It's very structured. The federal is giving very strong guidelines. If you spend it wrongly or how, um, then we have to pay it back. Okay, I knew about that. I guess I just didn't realize we had a specific committee for it. Yeah, because what okay. we were just trying to get soliciting, because we have to make the final decisions. The thought was either set up a gigantic public meeting, let this committee work out getting Actually, that, and then there's a kind of an intermediary between the, the town and the board, and we'll have to make the final so decision. So if like individuals have, like if I had an idea, I would go to the Well, committee. you better read the guidance. Read the guidance. Where yeah. is that available? Uh, it's right on the ARPA website. It's on the ARPA website. On the LCT, they have uh, links. Um, it's very specific things you can look <coughs> for. There's a lot of reading. Okay. And it's quite boring, and it's not easy to um, Get discern <laughs> what you're supposed <laughs> to be doing. Can okay. you give me the clips notes later? So the, 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 you're going to want to stay right in the line. Okay. There will be a public hearing yeah. um, <clears throat> with an opportunity for people from town to, sure. to have ideas. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. That's January. Were you you were here? January fourth. Right? January fourth. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. With master in the gym. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions at all um, for Brandy or any of the other committee members that are here about the ARPA funding? And all right. Um, so it is six twenty-five, and Mike is here, and Rita and Russell are here. Um, we could switch back to the um, discussion of these particular properties and, and then kind of open it up as a general discussion um, just to, uh, you know, and, and what the town can do about this. Um, so Mike, you are the original person that called and, and I know that you've been meeting um, and coming before the select board for a while. So I'm going to give you the floor first. Whatever you wanted to address tonight, um, let's do that first. Okay. And then we'll move on to some other things. Do you, your, is your lawyer going to be no, here? No, he had, had a prior commitment he could not make okay. it. Okay, all right. And, um, but hopefully next select board meeting he'll be available. Okay. So, <clears throat> quite honestly, he gave me a couple of questions that I should pose to the board. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing he told me, obviously, is pretty much what you people have indicated. I probably shouldn't deal with the individuals involved, which is the information that you guys thought was... Well, <coughs> judging the character of the people that you're exactly. dealing with, yes, for your own safety. Right. So that being said, um, one of the questions was, this has been going on for two years, mm -hmm. plus, mm -hmm. and we have seen little to no results. Mm -hmm. I think the board will agree with that. Yeah. So, the question is, where do we stand right now? I mean, as far as the board is concerned, mm -hmm. where do we stand? That's the first question. Okay. And dealing with both those properties. Mm -hmm. So, I, I'll pose that. I, I, okay. I hope I get a chance for a follow-up because there's another question as well. Sure. Um, so, uh, for the Ainsworth Road property, um, our zoning administrator did send a notice of violation uh, by certified mail um, and we were instructed by our lawyer to um, keep a record of that transaction so the first letter that we sent same letter twice but we sent it twice because the first time the post office failed to keep the little uh, receipt 
they didn't know where it was. So, and at that, that first time the letter was sent, um, I'm assuming that the uh, property owners did actually take the letter. Um, the second time we sent it, uh, certified mail, they refused to take it. So we, we got that back. Um, we, um, Robin photocopied that and we sent a copy of the letter plus the proof uh, that the certified letter was sent to the property owners to our town lawyer who um, was to register that um, non-compliance um, with the Washington County Court. So it's, it, I assume it's on a court docket somewhere that eventually the um, the court will take up this um, act of non-compliance. Um, what was the what was the issue? The issue, well, the issue is, um, I mean, there are a lot of issues there, but the one issue that we're working on um, is in the zoning ordinance where, um, actually, I will, I will read it to you. Um, <clears throat> basically, where you can't have more than one and then violations. Uh, let's see, um, one. Um, unlicensed, unregistered vehicle or other junk visible on your property. If you have more than that, you need to put a fence around it. So that's, that's the one issue. There are other issues with that property um, that I can get into if you want. But, um, but that's the issue that, that's in our zoning ordinance that we can address uh, with this particular property. Can you divide, define visible? Uh, well, basically, um, in the in the uh, ordinance, let me find that part. Um, it has to be behind a fence or in your backyard, behind a fence, so that from a public drive, way you can't see it. Yeah, public way. Public, public way. way. Yeah. That's a sidewalk or a public street. Highway. Yeah, public street or sidewalk or travel walkway or something. Yeah. On page seven, there's another thing in the building that might might pertain here. Well, it does. It's uh, section 27, penalties. Violations of the zoning regulation shall be subject to a fine not to exceed $50 per day or to other procedures in accordance with statutes with sections 444 and 4445 of the state regulations. And that's actually section 4451 uh, at this yeah. point. Is that something the courts have to impose? Well, we could impose it. Okay. Okay. We, could, we could impose it. And um, it might be uh, in, in, uh, per vehicle, per day. That's the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my feeling is these people don't have money as it is. But that doesn't matter. So how are you going to... Right so to back up one bit, we had a call from Chase and Chase, who's an attorney. Mm -hmm. No, they are um, land surveyors. Yeah, yeah. And they said by the state that they did the house is considered condemned. Yeah. By who? By the state. By the state, okay. I talked with Chase and Chase about it too, and there's something deep in the regs to the effect that uh, abandoned property. And what, what's abandoned? And apparently it was abandoned. Mm -hmm. It was empty for quite a few yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Are the property taxes paid up? Yep. So, and there are issues, um, you know, this house technically has no source of water, has no sewage. Well, that's one of the reasons why Chase and Chase was calling, okay. is because they were up there to do a survey so they mm -hmm. could do a septic. Uh -huh. And it just happened that the state guy was there at the same time and said, you shouldn't <coughs> be here. So Chase and Chase left and they're going to come in and do research in the office. Okay. So, yeah, um, just to continue that there, people are now living in that house full time and have been for a while. Um, and so there's no septic, there's no sewer. Um, and I think maybe now there are children living there. So there is another option that the town could um, pursue uh, with an emergency help order. Um, and the question is with the pandemic, um, I mean, obviously you can't evict somebody from property that they own, um, and I don't know. I don't know anything about this process of the emergency help um, order, um, but that is one way to um, 
get people out of the house. You still, you still have to wait for the court to act on that. It's a long. It would be a long drawn out process, right. I assume. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, would that town health officer have the wherewithal to do that? Yeah, except that we don't have a town health officer. So doesn't that fall back to you? Well, it falls back to the chair, but after tonight, I'm not going to be the chair anymore, so... Chicken. Um, I did do that once with the help of the palace health officer, Jay Copping. He helped me in a situation um, across from the town office last winter. Um, and basically, it was an emergency health order on the landlord um, who did comply. Um, this would be much more complicated, I think. And I don't know what the, the, the route is. And, and to be honest with you, as someone who didn't really sign up to be a health officer, I don't really want to get involved. Um, um, I just, did this for 33 years, and I didn't get involved. Yeah. So, um, my experience with this is even with court orders in your hand, and the sheriff, because I've done this many times at the state level, <laughs> the sh unless the sheriffs are going to draw guns and hogtie people, they're just not going to do that. Right. And we so, came down to properties occupied for six or seven years with no power, no sewer, and they got a court order in your hand. I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't file something. I'm just I think our expectations need to be well, what the reality is going to be. Right. That unless you're ready to have a gun battle or get pretty violent, well, you might hurt these people. Sometimes, well, what can it probably is already in effect now. The fifty dollars a day per vehicle goes back to when the notice of violation was, and that builds into a lien. So from the that town, goes. from the town, the yes. town could put a lien yeah. on one would think. Right. Yeah. Good. So we could go that route with the fining. Um, and accumulating, and we can get it from when we sent. I guess the second letter would be the the official one that we got proof of. Um, so a quick quick question: When you send out that notice of violation, mm -hmm. and you send out the notice of fine per day, and I agree, I think it's yeah. per vehicle. Probably. Mm -hmm. yes. Does the lien holder are they notified as well, so they understand what's going on here? Because yeah. that might be a little bit more yeah, muscle that you. Yeah. Yeah. In a in a. Uh, Title 24, Chapter 117, 4451, which is referred to in our zoning ordinance, it's just that it's pretty outdated, so the number is different. There's a whole, there's a procedure that the town would need to take in sending a warning notice. Um, there's a chance for the property owner to appeal. Um, and then, in, um, yeah, and then basically it is uh, it is attached as a lien to their property. So if they were ever to sell it, um, whoever is buying it would basically be acquiring the the, um, the penalties that they've accumulated. Is there is there a mortgage or is there a lien holder? Yes, there is. I don't know that for sure. No, no yeah. we're talking on the we're we're not talking. We're, We're talking, talking Ainsworth. 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 Yeah. We haven't, right. we haven't yeah. got across the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. So, um, so that's that's a, an avenue, a route that the town could take, um, and I guess probably we should. Um, yeah. Banks do not like to be involved in any liability. Uh huh. Yeah. So you said there's a lien holder on this property, <clears throat> and that'd be a bank. I don't remember seeing one come through the office. I can't imagine a bank. I mean, how, can they, they say, how can a bank lend somebody money on a house that's condemned? Right. Yeah, I mean, what I understand is the mother paid for it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So my understanding was okay. So my understanding is wrong. Yeah. So my thought process, it. Mike, would be that mm -hmm. we would have our attorney prepare documents. these documents mm -hmm. or signature by whomever needs to sign them to make sure that they're legal. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll just see how it plays out. I kind of mm -hmm. know how it's probably going to play out, but at right. least we've done what we can do. Yeah. The, the notice of violation would ricochet back and forth right. quite a few times. Before That's okay. We'll do what we're supposed to do. Before the attorney was happy. Mm -hmm. I yeah. guess my, my point to this whole thing is for, for two plus years, this, uh, this has been going on. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, everything was going to be cleaned up before the first snowfall. Uh, on well, both, that, both properties. That was my understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I could be wrong. Well, be my first that time. wasn't 
that wasn't agreed upon by the property owners. I mean, that's just the, what we said we would try to. That's, that's what, what the you, town that's said. That's what you wanted you to have done. Yeah. Correct. No. So, so. I, I guess the problem I have is that the, the people who are occupying the property just keep snubbing their nose at the town, mm -hmm. which is all of us. And they, nothing is happening. They're able to just keep getting away with it, getting away with it. So at what point does the town say, all right, we're going to have to deal with this, we're going to have to deal with it in a manner that we get some results? And I guess that's the question, is how do you plan on dealing with it? Um. I think what we just mentioned would be yeah, the next I think step. it's a good start. I, I, yes. But the problem I mean, is, yeah, you know, if there's not compliance, how do we deal deal with it? I don't we, think we, we can't physically can't remove them it. unless the courts order it done, regardless of what our laws and statutes say. That's the fact. Have they been assessed any fines up to this point? Well, that's what I said. If we need to do that, I'm more than willing to do that but through the so lawyer. They have so the, the reality is they're they probably not going to pay those fines. So yeah. one of the questions that I would... I would look at is that, and I'm going to only assume this, that there must be some sort of mandatory reporting uh, responsibility by the town if there's um, child or adult endangerment in some way. So if these, if there are children living in this home and they are without septic, without water, without whatever, then that would be an unsafe environment for those children. And to for the town to, again, I'm assuming there must be some mandatory requirements, uh, reporting requirements that we're responsible for as a town, um, that there would be some liability issue if something should happen to those children um, and we didn't do our due diligence to ensure their, their safety and their well-being. Given the that, fact that you have knowledge of it. Well, so, so um, who, I don't, this is where it gets real dicey because it's a private home and we can't, go on the property without their permission. Well, maybe that's true, but there is knowledge that there are children living Because I don't have that knowledge. That's what I'm trying to say. How am I going to acquire that knowledge for a man? I, I don't know that select boards, a health officer may be a mandatory reporter. I'm just saying it, it, you can't obtain that information in an unlawful manner to then file a warrant to go in to file these. You see where I'm getting at with I this? understand, but I think that there's probably enough information out there that would present itself where someone probably should do um, a safety um, visit to the home to ensure the well-being of those children. So the, the, the health yeah. officer could, based on a complaint, but if the, the, if the homeowner says, no, you can't come in my home, well, then, then you've got to so, get a search well, well, don't you think that we're not sitting here saying that we have a complaint, that they don't have any yeah. sewer, they don't have I any got water? You. Okay. What I'm saying, what we can't, it take? I, I'm not arguing that I think we shouldn't do something, I'm arguing that we can't go in in an unlawful manner. So I, I don't have first-hand knowledge of this, and even for our, our health inspector, or whatever we got, if you don't have one, to go in, if he says no, you've got to go before a judge and get a search warrant to go in. But are these children in school? I don't know what the children do. See, that's if there's mandatory reporters at the school, do they have knowledge of this? Right. I'm so, just saying that there is an obligation as a mandatory reporter. So if there's any, but who here is a mandatory that, reporter? And I can't. I don't think that we can use the the reason that we don't have a health officer in this town. I, I just see that there could be a liability and negligence issue if something should happen. And, you know, in this particular environment that we're speaking to now and the one that we're going to speak to here and, and shortly, there is a huge safety issue that is, um, you know, I, I just feel like the town is... is and have you person. filed complaints about the SRS for the one you, you know not, about? No. Okay. Well, I also think you have to remember there's kind of a fine line because there's a lot of people that live off the grid with no sure. power, no electric, no running water. And that's how they raise their kids. So there's also that aspect you got to think about. I mean, that's not a requirement to have a child. That's true, but you also have to know that their safety is being... Well, I agree yeah. with you on that, but you can't just say, okay, well, they don't have any water or this or that. If it's really that's not a In that situation... You know, let's, 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 yeah, wait, let's finish. Isn't there a sewer so, aspect to this? That, yeah, that feels like the part that rises to the most concern. So the thing is, the is that community. when we have asked her, she says that they spend the night across the road and they walk over the next morning. But for us to prove that, I mean, yes, yeah, somebody can stand up all day. But You'd the have other to be aspect surveilling the property almost. is that 
That's what Ryan McCall said too. He has also said that <clears throat> that um, not to go there on your own because yeah. there's danger, and that's the whole aspect of of sending either a zoning administrator or a health officer there. That there has been gunpoint. So yeah, I've been there for when the guns were out. The yeah, three people on FSU and those two. Well, it sounds like somebody should call a sheriff and have a welfare check done, and they can do that. And why can't the town do it? Who's going to sit there? It's a liability for us to go there if they if he's pulling guns on. No, I'm saying why can't the town call the sheriff's department for a welfare check and have that done? Why can't the town? Well, do that, that what you just said alone, that they pull guns out, that to me is a safety issue. If they're willing to go to that degree to avoid people coming onto their property, and no he's matter. successful in doing so. That so, alone is a, is a hazard. So, Rita, the state police have advised the town that nobody from the town, any kind of town official or whatever, deal with these people at all. If there's an issue, there they have requested that we um, have them do that. No, and police. I understand. So they're waiting for a situation to come up. They're not going to just go in and address the fact that... Right. And again, we can't get the, our frustration is the same as yours. We can't get anybody to do anything. The state is aware of this. The sewer is it the sewer people? My Ryan McCall, Mc, company, yeah, Ryan McCall, Ryan McCall. and they're aware of it. And the state's not doing anything. So I just don't know what we can do physically. Uh, Ryan, uh, go ahead, Peter. You've been raising your hand. So, as an abutter for over fifty years, um, I have a long history. Uh, and I don't think whatever you do is going to change things substantially in terms of their lifestyle and how they, how they live. Mm -hmm. The question about when, when you were trying to go in there and, and the only way you could get access is with, I think there were game wardens, armed game wardens that went in. We went out with the state police with the fire department. Yeah, and, and to, to, to acknowledge that what's going on, they did clean it up, but now it's right back to where it was. So. There, we have no enforcement. We've never had any enforcement in this town. Um, so I, 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 it's a conundrum. I don't, I, I don't really know how you're going to deal with it. As far as the kids, the first, the first line of, of, of is the school. They, they would know if these kids are abused or underfed They'd be or in whatever. That position, correct. They would, you would know about that. I haven't heard any. I haven't heard any. Well, any. I can tell you something about that. Well, um, let, my, let's my, not. Let's yeah. not. We're not talking about. I, I'm just someplace. saying that, yeah. that there, we have, we, you know, this is, they're not, they're not going to change. Mm -hmm. and, and there's now another party living in this kind of heated Quonset hut or whatever it is. And, and uh, but uh, they have respected our boundaries mm -hmm. to, some, to the most part, which it took a while to, to, mm -hmm. to, to get them to, because when I first, got here. Uh, they were jumping cars on my land and each and 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 because it was easier because it was all leveled off. But we got through all of that. But you know I, I had some you know um, I don't know sympathy but you know you know understanding right. of their situation. I mean and you know there you don't have to go far to find something similar throughout this well certainly in the, in the, in the northern tier of the state you, you you can see that. It's all like other parts of Woodbury. Yeah. yeah and and so I just hope we do it sensibly and properly, and, and particularly look out for the safe, safe, uh, safety of the kids. Mm -hmm. As far as the junking stuff, that that can be dealt with. I mean, you can go in there and have those 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 cars, and there's a ton of tires back there, yeah. just a huge number of tires. Get down back to your place. So yeah, yeah. right along yeah. The, the, the wetland there. So let me. Uh, Michael wanted to know about the property that we're talking about right now. Also, um, so uh, I did have a. a long conversation with Ryan McCall. He's the compliance and enforcement officer for the Agency of Natural Resources. And he's been working with the Caton property. You know, um, that's an active uh, state uh, enforcement um, process that's going on. And, you know, he's, of course, every time I see him, you know, he said, we're, we're ready to go to litigation on this, on this property, because uh, he mentioned that there are times where he will meet with um, the uh, Marie Caton and that um, she does kind of clean things up again and then it just gets worse again. So he said that, you know, 
That's, you know, and so, and so he would give her the benefit of the doubt. It's been repetitive. Yeah, and so he said, you know, I'm, I'm done doing that, um, and that, that um, property is now in a process of litigation. Um, again, I don't know what the results will be, but the state is, is um, involved in that property at this point. So is it safe to say that the state is dealing with one property and that the town is dealing with the other property? That appears to be what's yeah. happening right now. Yes. Yeah. The 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 Caden property. You know, it's it's like an unregistered salvage yard. I mean, there's a number of different major issues that um, that the state has um, pointed out to them for you know to try to get some type of compliance. Um, so at one point there were three three different um, um, violations that they were dealing with and. Um, so basically, the, I think the main one that they're sticking with is the fact that it's an unregistered salvage yard. That's so why is it that one is the state and one is the town when they're both in the township? Because the what's happening across the road hasn't quite got as extreme yet, I think. I think that's the main reason. So what point does that come? When you're allowed one and they got, I did a count, they got seven of them over there. So yeah. at what point does that meet that threshold? I don't know. We'd have to ask Brian McCall that. He, he's aware of what's going on across the road, and so far that hasn't become something that, that he's um, engaged the state on yet. Um, so, I know I think with the state with unregistered vehicles, I think the limit is uh, three, it might be five, I'm not sure, I think it's three. Um, so we're saying is on one side of the road they can have three or five, on the other side they're only allowed one. So. Why isn't the town enforcing their one vehicle for the whole town, depending upon what side of the road it's on? I mean, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Well, I think because the state is involved with one side and not the other, so I'm, I'm fine with letting the state go through its... its um, so if the state makes it. reaches an agreement with them on four or five vehicles, mm -hmm. the town's not going to step in and say you can only have one? Because um, the town... Know. The town should be the driving force here. Mm -hmm. No, I can't so answer that question. I don't. So if you look around town and you go to houses, there's there's people that have more just because you can't see it from Route 14. Have cars. So you're, if you nip one, you need to get them all, because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just Absolutely. repetitive. And are you ready to hire a full-time compliance officer to do that? Because this guy ain't doing it. He's not doing it. At one point, the state was going around and doing it themselves because there was. A lot of money in salvage, but they're, right. they're not doing yeah. anymore. Well, there is quite a bit of money in, in metal again, so yeah. the, things are getting salvaged. I, you know, talking with Ryan McCall, um, you know, we, we like to say that we're the town with the most lakes and ponds. We're also the town with the most um, hazmat, hazardous waste, junkyard kind of violations that Ryan McCall is dealing with. That's our really? distinction in the, in the area that he covers, which is Lamoille, Washington, Caledonia. Oh. Um, there's basically seven active sites now that the town, uh, that the state uh, is, is dealing with. Um, and one of them is the Caton property um, and the Daigle property. Um, and there are others, I'm not going to mention them tonight in this meeting. Um, so far, the area that uh, Rita and Russell are concerned about is not on their radar. Um, and I think hearing that there's a somebody living in a Quonset hut on the Caton property, um, that's um, another red flag for um, the state with, with that property, um, which I don't think that they're aware of right at the moment. Um, so it is a problem in town. Um, and uh, there's really, you know, um, and as Randy mentioned, you know, if we want to go with our one car thing, um, you know, in fairness, if we're going to go after one or two families, um, we should probably go after everybody. And um, we probably have 60 people here um, at a meeting um, if we started doing that. Um, I personally, I think that the, the zoning ordinance um, with the one car is maybe a little bit too um, outdated. Uh, and maybe we should use the state guideline of three cars, which these properties still have have um, flying, um, but you know, I just, I just kind of feel like there's pretty much very little that we can do. I mean, we can go through this fine process, and um, 
I mean, that's my bad. I think we should, with this particular yeah. property, we can handle it. Let's do the mm -hmm. fines. Let's do the next step. But mm -hmm. if it drags out in the court, there's nothing else we can do. Uh, it all feels pretty futile to me, but especially with um, those two particular properties that we've been talking about. So I'd like to give Russell and Rita a chance to... Um, Did you get your second question asked? Yeah, I, I I think it's pretty yeah, pretty well close. pretty well addressed. Okay, I'm as frustrated as you are. Just be well, I mean, but I the, I the problem I really do. have is one side of the road you can have four, the other side you're allowed one. I mean, that you. that in itself speaks volumes of how the town is handling it. Or the, not town, handling the town is letting the state handle the the worst part of it, and then we'll deal with the with the other side. And of the fact that we are handling it's in the court. We can issue the fines, which I think we'll do. But I, don't know I think that would be a good a good yeah. start to start issuing the fines. But I think our frustration is still going to be there. Is what I'm saying. I think we all understand that. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Okay. So, <laughs> Russell or Rita? Well, I mean, we're kind of in the same situation. And to sum it up, what we live with is these people moved into the neighborhood, and uh, their intentions were, as you know, like to fix up the house that they bought, mm -hmm. and uh, they moved a camper in roughly about 50 feet away from our back deck. And uh, and every night, you know, we have to listen to the generator run all night long because they mm -hmm. live in that camper. Mm -hmm. um, we watch them carry in five gallon uh, propane tanks because mm -hmm. there's no power, so that's how they heat the propane tanks. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the dog barks all night long. And uh, they're septic, there is not, no septic, as you know. We mm -hmm. promised you a port of temporarily. We just told you what you want here. Mm -hmm. uh, no water, no power. and. Uh, and in this situation, we have a rental property there, and that septic system that they put in is roughly maybe 20 feet from our septic, from that, from that, uh, from that well. Artesian well. Artesian well. Mm -hmm. And um, and now what they've done is now keep keep in mind the piece of property that they put this camper on. I think there's not much more than 40 or 50 feet wide. And now what they've done is they've gone and they put the structure up. Maybe Brand, you may have seen it driving mm -hmm. by. You've seen I've it. seen that. Is this on Flat Street? Yeah. 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 So what they've done is they put a big structure up over the top of their camper. They just towers. So when we open, we go on our back deck, this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. you get a permit? No, it's a no, permanent. No permits. It's permanent to the ground, but they got no permits, and they're about 25 feet, 20 feet away from my, my property line. Mm -hmm. Now, years ago, we and I, we went for a, <clears throat> a boundary line uh, to uh, to put up our house, and we got turned down. You know, we took it in the chin and, and redesigned our house and did it the way it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you guys have power to take that structure down. Mm -hmm. They didn't get a permit. And uh, I don't want to see it left up. <coughs> it needs mm -hmm. to come down until they get a permit. Mm -hmm. If anything, so we start there. We have our zoning administrator. So you need to file a notice of violation with these. Yeah, I found out about this about a week ago and went up and looked and I said, this this place is just this is not in, this is not habitable. It is not. It's neither structure. And every it night is not. every it's night, eleven o'clock, yeah. twelve o'clock. I mean, all hell breaks loose. So they have a they have a kid that lives in here, roughly maybe thirteen or fourteen years old. Teenager, yeah. Teenager and I mean the, the screaming and the scrutiny this kid takes, 11 o'clock at night, you can just hear him screaming at him. It's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, again, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not fair to us. We've invested a lot in our home. And, uh, you know, and I, and I get it. There's a certain way that people live, a certain way they bring things up. But I shouldn't have to look at it. Mm -hmm. and, and they're approaching on a property. And we feel that structure should come down with no questions asked. They can go for their permit. But meanwhile, we should have to look at it. They wouldn't get a permit for, for, no. for that court. And you're absolutely right. Yeah. The property is uninhabitable. Well, there's another $50 dangerous. a day fine. It is dangerous yeah. to be living in a camper yeah. in the middle of winter. Yeah. We said okay. it to because we have a two and a half story home so we can watch everything they do. They'll lug propane tanks in for the furnace. I believe uh, the uh, RVs are limited to uh, 180 days. Well, then, then this you have that. This is yeah. And they have yeah. a generator and it runs all night long. Now the generator's been running so long, the exhaust system's burned out, and it's just oh. all night long. We have to listen to this all night long. The yeah, other thing, I, the other thing I would like to add to what you're saying is, too, is when these type of situations happen, there's nothing precluding the property owner who's affected by it, by going to the list and say, look, my property value has yeah. dropped, right. and you need mm -hmm. to take exactly. this in consideration here yep. when, when you send out my tax. The list too. Well, you, no, you guys could also individually take them to court, too. Yeah. Well, and we could, but, it, you know, we're okay that they, you know, they have a plan to, you know, rebuild the neighborhood and, and, and build right. your house, but they're not that's doing right. that. 
And they literally moved in in February of last year. They brought the camper in. Piles and of house, piles and of house And I'm sure that you can, you've been up there, you can see it's nothing but a junkyard. Mm -hmm. And that should, it should not be, like, no one in this town should have to have someone move in next to them and within 12 months have a junkyard. And as he mentioned, wherever the gray water's going, wherever the sewer's going, it's very close to our well. And that is a safety and environmental issue that cannot be um, disregarded just because someone likes to live like the way they like to live. Now the 180 day thing, that's, that needs to be enforced. Yeah. If they're only allowed yeah. to stay in that motor home for 180 days, then they're done. They've been in there since February of last year. Is it this something that the town can enforce? We can file the notice of violation, correct? Yes. That's a that'll, that'll start the that'll start dollars. the process. So what I'd like to just add to um, this entire situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were going back and forth about what the town can do and what the town can't do. You know, Mike's <coughs> particular situation, ours, and you mentioned there are other properties. Mm -hmm. I can think of one just up the road from us that is beginning to quickly become a very similar situation which if any of you if any of you have lived in this town for over 20 something years you will recall when the pickets were forced to clean up their yard yep. okay so things can be done well, that's but that particular again. property is starting to be um, similar to the Dangles and others and the people who are living there came from that end of town and now we're moving up to that our end of town. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would like to mm -hmm. just say is that we should try to prevent these things from happening to begin with. Mm -hmm. The particular property that we're speaking of, that property should have been condemned mm -hmm. and never, ever been able to, the property owner should have never been able to sell that as a structure that could be lived in. I, I agree with that 100%. And same thing with this one, with, with Mike's property. Mm -hmm. That is a condemned piece of property, I and agree. I don't know how it ever got sold for someone to be able to inhabit it. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, as a town, we need to either set some, some parameters that says if, you're, if the property hasn't been lived in in a certain amount of time, if it doesn't have running water or electricity or sewer, whatever, whatever, uh, guidelines we have then it's condemned property and it can't be sold mm -hmm. to me that would be a way to try to prevent these things from occurring send a message at least then we have something to start i think with. the state does have something like that but i haven't found it yet i heard about it it's just ridiculous and it can happen to, it can happen to any of our properties mm -hmm. you I know mean, that added to what she said i spent a substantial amount of money developing that piece of property to the butt set mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to have these people come in. I mean, I've got the septic design. That's all on file with the mm -hmm. town. They got everything there. I guess my question is, who in hell would want to buy that piece of property with well, the, that existing situation? The like same that? thing here. We have a rental piece of property, and and uh, we're going to sell it to the people renting it. But once this all happened, they backed out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and our our home. I mean, we've lived here for thirty five years. And we've put a lot of money and you know into this property. It's an investment for us. Mm -hmm. And I agree. If we're going to be living next to junkyards, then you know maybe the town needs to start thinking about doing some reassessing and looking at our tax structure, mm -hmm. our, our property taxes. Because mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, them living next to us is sure as hell not doing a thing for our property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's time that the town do something. I think the town needs to figure out what it can do. And that, that's the big question mark that we've been dealing with. Um, well, we know that the structure is illegal, no uh, permit, and it's uh, that. yep. That's a given. But that's two, something that can be taken down. There's two structures. Yeah. And in my case, it's a condemned property. Why yeah. in hell are they allowed to be there? But by whom? This is what I'm trying to get across. Who, we who, don't who, condemn who? properties, nor do we regulate properties that are condemned by someone. That's what I'm getting at. Like, I, I don't know where we find that information or who's in the condemned officer. How, how can we become... Well, it says that we would have to write an ordinance to cover this there stuff, which go. we don't currently have. And zoning That's what I'm trying to get across, is we don't have this stuff. It's all good stuff. But yeah. what I'm saying is we're talking about, well, you know, it could go on for six years or 60 years. At some point, the town has to, I mean, the, Kate, the Caton property, or whatever their last name is, that's been going on for years. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the town needs to address these things. I mean, we all live in this community, you know, we all... 
you know, want to feel comfortable with, and we want people to come in and, you know, we, we have our homes and when we sell them, we want to be able to know that there's some sense of value and that people are going to come into this. All we're doing is turning people away. So, Rita, do you know what happened uh, with the pickets? How, what, do you know the process that, 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 um, Well, I know that George Ray George was quite Bell, actively yeah. involved in that. And <clears throat> from what I understand, because what was happening in that case was there was a fence and the pickets were throwing the trash over onto the raised property. Mm -hmm. um, if memory serves me correctly, that was one of the issues. And, and it, it was forced court? to clean it all up, but I believe, I want to say the town helps fund the, town the cleanup of yeah, that. Yeah, they ended up buying a trailer. Mm -hmm. Town bought a trailer, a new trailer to live in. Mm -hmm. We took, we took care of the old one. Mm -hmm. Didn't we do that down here too? We did that in Keaton and stuff. No. So. I'm you know, just thinking this with your situation, oh, Rita and Russell, you know, we have this um, fund, the Sylvia... Sylvia Jackson Fund. Sylvia, Sylvia Jackson, Jackson Fund. Um, you know, when I met with that older couple that is living in that camper, um, you know, I just I kind of went away thinking that, you know, they, they got schnookered in buying that house. Why they ever bought that house, I have no idea. Well, my point um, exactly. Um, and, and who sold it to them? And that should be, I agree, that should have been illegal. They, they shouldn't have been sold that house. Hey, you, not that matters, but I mean, we offered them $5,000 more for that property. We were just going to rip it down and leave it vacant. Right. And she went and sold it to them for $5,000 $5, less. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if there are you no. Know, I didn't realize there was a, a teenager living there, but you know, just thinking of this older couple, I think, you know, they must be in pretty desperate straits to be there. Um, is there something like there's an agency called Capstone or Council on Aging? Is there some way that they can get assistance so maybe they could get electricity so they don't have to listen to the generator? I mean, the Sylvia fund, um, you know, maybe the town could use that and, and get them electricity. I mean, that all sounds well and good, but given yeah. our experience with this individual, mm -hmm. I'm not speaking mostly to the wife that, or, the, yeah. or the younger the younger gentleman there, mm -hmm. that that would not be an option. That doesn't him. help with the water. It doesn't help with the septic. Right, I agree. It doesn't help with yeah. that well And I think that it, I'm all for helping people, honestly, mm -hmm. really, I am. But I think That's that better. the more that you encourage this, the more they're just going to continue to do exactly. My question to, to, I will add to that, is of all these properties we've talked about, and the town has spent substantial money in cleaning up a lot of them, mm -hmm. where the hell has that got you? Because none of those properties now, they're just as bad as they were when you started. Mm -hmm. So, and where is that on the, on the budget line? Yeah, it. exactly. I mean, that's not a good return on your money. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't aware that the town has spent a lot of money on cleaning they, The town has spent a fair amount of money on cleaning up different properties just to have them go back to where the hell they are now. Well, I think the one down the road is they don't feel like anything's wrong with their property. They don't. And they don't have the money because otherwise if they had the money, they would put in the septic. They would fix the wall. But now that it's... Some people like living there. So, way. I mean, at the end of the day, we have to work within the regulation we have right now. Right now, the regulation for zoning is if there's a footprint that's established, don't need a permit. So, let's deal with the issue with what we have. If there's a need to, I mean, the only thing I can see is you're going to have to have a very long and very detailed ordinance to deal with noise, with all this stuff, with very specific. Um, structure for com uh, compliance enforcement. But how do these people, these people have been dealing with it for a year. I've been dealing with mine for two plus years. I, I got it, but what do you want, uh, I, I'm not being argued, I'm saying what, what are we supposed to do? We can't physically go down and take them out of this property. The very best we can do is issue fines, we can take it to court, and if, I mean, we have criminal cases the court's sitting on now for two years, people that committed felonies that they're not trying. Our stuff's way down the list. No, I've got a DUI case that I got involved in in the fire department. I don't know when it's going to come. It's How just, many nights we've we laid no, I got you. with our eyes open no. just listening to that guy? Yeah, no, I, I feel for you. Over and over every night. Mm -hmm. You get up. I just don't know what we're going to do. You get up taking a nap because you're tired. It's, mm -hmm. it's all the time. Mm -hmm. It's all the time. Mm -hmm. I think the away. answer to what you can do has already been, been presented to you. It's, it's illegal. It should come down. Yeah, and they're technically but, but, they're not supposed to be living. But ultimately a, a court, a judge has to say that. Well, I thought you said there's no... Uh, no, no, no. What I'm saying is we're going to write it. 
But if they say, screw you, we're not going to do it, I'm not going down there to enforce it. No, I don't. you got to go to court. It's dangerous. We would have to, that's what I'm trying to get you, is we would have to take it to court, and ultimately a judge is going to have to write that order. But there may be another solution. If they get it, if there's enough violations of each one, and the, some of the state violations are more than $50 a day. Right, 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 I got that. What I'm trying to say is if they comply, that's great. We can write the order. I'm, I'm going to the end of, what if they say we're not doing it? But wait a minute. It's got to go to court. If, if they're not court. allowed to have the structure because they haven't got a permit mm -hmm. and it's encroaching, the town has the power to make them take that down. They have to take it down. Right, I got that. Okay. So we write an order to remove it, but he says, screw you, we're not doing it. Our remedy to that is we take it to court. And then the judge has to remedy it and say, based on your ordinance, and then a court order is written. Then the police can enforce it. We can't get a bulldozer and go down and knock the property. That's what we're trying to get at. Is if they comply. And we're not asking. I mean, we understand that there is a process to that. But I think that, that you know, mm -hmm. just let, like in Mike's case, and you, now you're going to start imposing fines on the folks up the road, there is a process. And I, I, I guess it's, let's not turn our, let's not like just pretend like it's not happening. And we need to start enforcing where we can enforce things. So that not only we can perhaps discourage the people that are currently here, but discourage other people from coming in. Because I promise you, it's going to come to your part of the woods some, some, at some point. You know, unless you're fortunate enough to own a lot of property and no one can build around you or whatever. Um, but even even in that, someone, you know, it's 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 just not a good thing. It's just not a good thing for your community. Hey, so our, everyone should be interested in this. We're property. having our property survey now. And we're having that rental property surveyed, all three pieces of property being all surveyed out. And my survey calls me up and said, well, we're going to take a break from your property because we had a run-in with it. Apparently, they went and found a pin, and apparently he went over and just all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. And he said, threatening the guys that were putting the pins and, and threatening to pull all the pins out. And Each he, pin is a $600 fine. Know, right? Right? Yes, they're fine, but who's going to enforce it? But it. that's not a slight board item. We don't enforce right. boundary line. That's what I'm trying to say. You guys got to go to court no, over that. No, we understand that there are some things that we would have to do on our own, but I think that the fact that they're living in a, a mobile home that they're not supposed mm -hmm. to be living in, and they're building a structure which they don't have a permit for, definitely goes in the scope of the town. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In yeah. which we said we're and, gonna have you file and, yeah, the proper and, paper. And also, let's not forget about what Mike also has run into. We have you know, unregistered vehicles up there, more than one, and they're just crammed everywhere. Uh, one, one scenario, it might work is for the for the violation fines to build up into a lien, and the only way they're going to get any money out of that place is for somebody to buy it, and for the town to say, "Oh, well, those liens will be, we won't we won't force those if this person, if somebody buys it, and they're out of there." I never thought about that. Often. That that's one one method that might might work. Well, I think the end. I think we should just instruct the zoning officer to do prepare whatever documents. You you can build up forty thousand yeah, so dollars. Do what we got to do and see what happens. And start assessing the fines. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 I mean that's what we have in our toolbox. We don't have a lot of tools in the toolbox, but that's what we have. Mm -hmm. Anyone disagree? Yeah, that yeah no, I, I don't. I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Is this something that's going to happen? Relatively soon. It should happen yeah. as soon as uh, Bob can get it done. I, I wish I'd known about it before. Really, that's because your situation's the first I've heard of it. That's on sad. Road. That's, that's sad. Bad. Mm -hmm. That's just not right. Huh. So we'll have our zoning administrator. Um, and can you and probably we'll do that and report back to us at the next meeting where we're at with it? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the attorney will work off, probably compile. Yeah, just run it all through the attorney to make sure everything's legal, that's all. Because, man, if there's even if there's anything. Right, because when it ends anything. up in court, it all better be right. No, I mean, we can assume that it will end up in court. So well, it's going to end up in sure court. That, that yeah. we do. That's why I have the attorney prepare the paperwork and you'll just sign it. But the, 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 the fine clock keeps ticking every day. Right. Mm -hmm. and it can build up to a $20,000, $40,000 Lean pretty fast. Yeah. Well, there might be there might be a limit, and that's what our town lawyer can let us know that. I know that some of these things where you have fines, there's a limit on how high it can go. Um, I don't know if that's true Ooh. for this or not. I but, um, that one. 
So the other question I, I, I pose to you on, on all these properties I'm hearing, there's one thing that hasn't been addressed is who is going to go on the property and articulate how many vehicles is on each property and how is that going to be done? Our the zoning administrator can drive by and take a look. That's where um, video comes in. That's nothing to it. You could drive by. I wouldn't stop at the property. I guess I don't know. I, I but wouldn't I, because, I, man, I'd come back and it wouldn't be nice. What I don't know is how you have to articulate each vehicle. Do you have to do it by VIN number? I don't know. Or do you just have to show it? Because I don't know the answer to that. I think the, the, when I was talking with our t town lawyer about the Ainsworth Road property, um, I basically just supplied him with photographs. And that was sufficient. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. That's much easier then. Yeah. And you can probably tell which cars are not drivable. <laughs> is it possible? To, is it possible yeah. to get them to cease any further construction construction on what they're doing? Sure. Because, like you said, if they say no, we're going to have to look at that for a while. Uh huh. So, is there any way we get them to stop doing what they're doing? Or are they just going to go keep running? Well, we talk to our town lawyer about it. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, we'll talk to the lawyer. But again, I I always go to that extreme. If they just say screw you, get off my property and keep building. Well, they're going to because that's yeah, the behavior. I, I mean, you know, there's no expectation here really that, you know, sending them a letter and finding them is probably going to prevent them from not doing what they're doing. Right. But it's a start in the process. It looks like they're building something out of pallets. Now. Yeah. They are. That'll be their addition eventually. He's, That'll be their TV room. Uh, <laughs> you think that part of it is that they're probably, like it, like it. they're probably doing that to help with the snow load on the camper. Yeah. It's very, it's a very unsafe oh, the, situation. Yeah, the structure over the camper. I mean, I can understand why they're doing that. It's kind of, it's a practicality. They've had a blue tarp over it last winter. Yeah. And it probably didn't, probably leaked, and it's probably leaking now. So this, they're basically, it's just a, a, a roof over the camper to keep the snow and rain out. Yep. So it's a very practical thing to do. If you're living there. Yep. Um, but you got to get a permit just to build a five-foot dog house in Woodbury. But there's a lot of properties in Woodbury that never got permits, and it, it's not going to happen or show on the radar until we have another reappraisal. But in this instance, we'll get the stuff filed and see what happens. Well, I'm just but really in this concerned. situation is illegal. They're encroaching. They're supposed to go mm -hmm. get a permit for this, just like everybody else's, but they didn't. And, there's, and they wouldn't. there is a safety issue. I mean, honestly, it's just the thought that something well, could happen. Well, if you happen. have first-hand knowledge of a child that's in harm, you can call. Oh, social services. Yeah. That's what you could do. Yeah, it's poor kid. Jesus no, Christ. You don't have that first-hand knowledge, is what I'm saying. The person that has the first-hand knowledge is the one that should be filing the report. So is there any communication between the town and the school system as far as children that are in some of these properties? Is there, or is it no, everybody we're not. That's a total between the school and the homeowner. It could be a child, whole privacy children. issue, too. We're not, we're not, as a select board, not given those sets of data. That is between with you and the homeowner and, and, the and, and the family. Mm -hmm. We got involved in one of those, Mike, with one of those kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It was really bad. Really bad. And, and the school was just like, well, there's their side and there's your side. And there is I also an agency within the state that deals with children um, in unsafe situations. I can't think of the name of it right at the moment, but DCF. DCF. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's not DCF. just children too, but vulnerable adults. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm saying yeah. is, if there are people here that have first-hand knowledge of what's going on, they should be filing those reports as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, that can be done. So, um, so we'll have our zoning administrator address the um, property up on Flat Street, and we'll start imposing fines on. Um, both places, I guess, if there's non-compliance with the notice of violation yep. on Flat Street. Well, Flat Street will probably have to do the notice first, and then yeah. if they don't comply. But the other place, we can start the fines. Yeah. And there is a the start the fines are, should already be started. Get them ripping. Yeah. It goes back. And there's yeah. definitely yeah, a there's a, a look the at the look at the state statute for yeah. uh, four five one. There's a yeah. whole process that we would need to notify them first that we are going to be imposing fines. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, you're welcome to take this if you'd like, but yeah. that kind of, and our lawyer should be aware of that too. So I would definitely, in both situations, work under the guidance of the town lawyer, um, yeah, like, you, like you did because before. Because if there's anything that's not exactly right, right they're going to, that's why the lawyer needs to do it. Yeah. 
And you know, we do have a junk ordinance that we kind of put together. Um, and uh, of course, the pandemic hit, and we, we did post on the website, and there were comments that were made, kind of some in favor, and some, some against. Some saying, oh, you know, people should be able to do with their property whatever they please. Uh, but that's another route. Um, that thing is sort of sitting on the shelf, um, and we could dust it off and um, go through the process of establishing that ordinance. It would address um, a number of uh, the issues that we've been talking about tonight, mostly related to, to junk, cars and trash, et cetera, tires. Um, that's something that we could um, um, go through the process of establishing that ordinance in town. Um, Isn't that already in place? Like you mentioned, you can only have one unregistered vehicle. That's in our zoning. Well, there's a little bit of it in the zoning. Uh, that's what yeah. the problem. The zoning is old. Oh, it's old. So it's very antiquated. So the the remedies are very few. The only reference to junk is the unregistered unregistered cars. Car. That's it. It's, there's no noise ordinance about the generator. There's nothing on, mm -hmm. and it defers all septic stuff, I believe, to the state. No. Yeah. The, the trouble with ordinances and the trouble with our zone, zone is uh, it's like a safety program. Mm -hmm. If there's no enforcement, it's not worth a shit. So that was the same comment I was going to make. I, I, we never had this a hearing on this proposal because it never went anywhere, but my opinion, if you're going to have an ordinance like this, you're going to need to pay an enforcement officer because you can't expect this board to be that enforcement officer. I can tell you this board's already got way too much to do. So I'm not opposed to the, zone, the junk ordinance, but it needs to attach to it the funding for a paid. But that's a select officer. board's thing is to present that budget that has the, the finances. Well, first, we'd have to get the ordinance. Get I, the I don't ordinance. disagree, but I think we all agree that we shouldn't be creating a bunch of ordinances and there's no enforcement. No, I agree. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I share all your frustration. I mean, I wish I could just say, oh, just do this, it'll be easy, but none of it's going to be easy. You at least have to have a constable. And the enforcement is the hardest part. Because to enforce this stuff takes. I mean, like, like I've been in court a number of times on this type of stuff. All you got to have is one piece of paper out of order. Yep. The whole thing's tossed. Yep. But if it doesn't get started. Correct. But that's what I'm saying. So paying somebody, make you make sure they got the right paperwork, that the lawyer dealt with it all from minute one. You can't expect someone to run over there and do it a little bit, and then they mess it up, and then five steps down the road, the court tosses it. That's why the paid enforcement officer position. Well, and I think that that brings up just a, a good point, too, that there is a a real true cost to all of this and not just to us as the property mm -hmm. owner or Mike but to the entire town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um, you know now we're talking about an enforcement officer yep. we're talking about legal fees you know going to court I mean this is this is real that's what it's yeah it's and expensive it's too. expensive it's expensive mm -hmm. we just dealt with a road issue that costs a lot of money it costs us a ton of money and the people who don't want to comply totally understand that yep. and they understand how that works in their benefit <laughs> yeah because I'm not opposed to spending the money and doing it. It's just it's going to cost money. But it's going to cost us. I got the same situation behind my house. We, we got one down the road from my house. The guy shoots at people. I mean, like, he's got a he's got a foundation up there with full of garbage. He's got an old trailer up there that's shouldn't even be lived in, right. and they got people in and out of there. It's ridiculous. I saw a gate across from my you see, so it is on every corner. Oh, it's all over. It's everywhere. I don't think that. Yeah, I don't think that it's a question of, of, of it doesn't exist. It goes on. We're going to a couple times a year. People burning piles of trash. Three o'clock in the morning, we show up. And there's a big pile of trash burning. So it's a lot of problems going. I always report those to the air quality, and they usually do something with it. So. Can the select board move on? Is there anything? One more point. Sure. You mentioned um, mobile homes or campers or whatever. They can only be lived in for 100, 100 acres. And that's in our zoning ordinance. Right. That's in the zoning ordinance. Okay. So maybe uh, check on uh, Andrew Flames. Old right. house. Yeah, they've yeah, they got one down there, there that's yep. been there quite some time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and Mike, speaking with Ryan McCall, he mentioned that camper also. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's the state's radar. They're brewing up. Ryan McCall is the state enforcement officer for. Yeah, he he he's was he he's spoke to that person in that camper, um, mm -hmm. and good. it was told by the person that it would be moved, but um, it's still there, and I don't think Ryan knows that. I'm going to let him know that in an email tomorrow morning. Um, so we'll see what happens. Well, the owner also told the delinquent tax collector that he's going to sell it to him, so that's why mm -hmm. he hasn't paid taxes for four years. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
the, and that's and that's another thing. When it, when you got something like that that is literally <laughs> in sight of the town office, uh, how does that allow to continue? Yeah. I mean, it's right. In, you know, it's almost like slapping you guys in the face, saying, "Hey, I'm here. You guys are doing nothing about it." Well, so. you know, the place up on um, East Hill Bliss Road where the people were murdered yeah. and, and the buildings were burned. Mm -hmm. The state police knew about, I mean, we all knew about that for years, mm -hmm. and the state police didn't do anything. But that doesn't, but yeah. now you're yeah. shifting yeah. the thing to state police after, 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 after the murder. Well, 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 came to <laughs> but that's what, that's my point too, is that, you know, there's nothing that we can really do, and law enforcement will have to come in. So basically, it's not until something happens that's true. that they come in. And, you know, that's, it's, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate for, you know, but everyone. The, the problem that I see is you have a person that doesn't pay their taxes for four years. So why do I want to pay my taxes? Why, I mean, and are you going to enforce it if I don't? I mean, how, how do you how do you regulate that? Well, the, what is the... That's the delinquent, delinquent tax. Unfortunately, yeah, that's, 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 that's the that's select board thing. No, I understand that, but maybe the select board could give the delinquent tax collector a little input. Because that's an elected position. Actually, it's an elected position, and, and so we don't the select board them. really... Um, we don't have oversight over that. We can, I agree with you. I, I don't that. know what the policy is. You guys are the, the yeah. forefathers of this town yeah. at this point. So your are <laughs> Well, right. but the problem also, just to make sure everybody understands that with elected positions, we can't instruct them to do anything. I understand that. I think your point is that it erodes public trust in the whole system. Yeah, People absolutely. are allowed Agreed. to out the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Right. Four exactly. years seems like an awful long time. time. <laughs> when, when you call the state police and it takes them an hour to show up and it's an emergency situation, um, yeah. you know, um, yeah, it does. There's, it's we had, kind uh, of have a... a, a hopeless situation. I mean, it, you really can't depend on anybody to for that. Um, so Unless it's domestic violence. Then they're there. Well, it's a grant. <laughs> so what, what, what's the question? So you got to use that word. <laughs> a good, good point that was brought up is what is the structure for delinquent taxes? At what point, how many years do they go you before it goes up to tax? Yeah. Yeah. Why so don't you that's a question ask. for Ron Wells. Right. So the, the town is who elected him. So right. the town the has the right to, on that. to ask okay. for him to be on the agenda. Can give him can direction ask. on that as the people Same elected. thing with, with the zoning administrator. If but does it does that change from tax collector, from delinquent tax collector to delinquent, or is there a I don't fix? know the answer to that. I asked Ron about it because that was my concern. With and he's every, everybody's different. Basically. Yeah, you can right, yeah. when you're elected, you get to make your own rules yeah, for correct. delinquent. There's no oversight except Mine by the voters. Mine was three years done. You can't pay a cent, it's gone. Right. Ron, he's more lenient. It's all over the place. <clears throat> so I think if you guys talk to him and yeah. share your concern yeah. with Ron. But if, if a, a resident okay. wants to get a copy of the delinquent Any, taxes anybody. and how many years they've been, we can go to the town. Yes. I think Buddy Absolutely. can get that it's for you. Public it's a public record. record. That would be it's interesting. Public record. That's a public yep. record. That's what I thought, yeah. Has Hardwick Police uh, come before you and, uh, and try to? Uh, yes. Yes, we try, try to try. Um, initiate a contract with them, and we were pretty much we were set to do to it. it and, and then they had a number of their patrolmen. Um, and then they lost. The resign. Well, they, they lost yeah, a bunch of people, and their uh, select board opted not to refill the position, so they backed out. Yeah. Well, they had military commitments or yeah. something, didn't they? Yeah. But the, other, the flip side, it was the select board didn't fill some didn't of the fill positions. The, fill those positions. So they didn't have the force talking to Aaron. Uh, he, the, the force was not large enough to do any coverage for us. Mm -hmm. that felt like yeah, we, we were all set to, to um, start that was an initial happen. contract with them. And yes. Washington County Sheriff's Department, you know, it's, they're understaffed. Um, they basically will catch you speeding, and that's about yeah. it. Um, one, one hour a week. Yeah. 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 So, right and we knew what, what hour that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's frustrated because it gets, I, I've sat at drunks fighting with us at accident scenes or people burning piles of trash or all this other property and the police won't show up. Mm -hmm. State police coming? No, nope, they're too busy. Okay, well, we're going to leave, I guess. You know, so we share your frustrations and all of this. It's just We have zero police protection when we're out at the street in the middle of the night. That's crazy. Zero. You know, we had the state police come after that shooting um, up on East Hill, and uh, their advice to uh, the town um, was basically to get these people to move out of town and, and let it be somebody at some other town's problem. Um, It'd be awesome. So, Good luck with that. Let me know it works out for you. Yeah. So, um, can we, can the select board move on? Does that and satisfy your need for now? Sure. Yeah. Um, 
It's yeah. frustrating, right? I'm Maybe. frustrated as you are. No. And it's getting worse. It's all over. Yeah, it's all, yeah. The, the, the level of lawlessness just continues to grow. Yeah, that's what Ryan called yeah. It's all over the state. It's just, uh, yeah. and it's kind of, for some people, it's kind of desperate times. And, and we're seeing some of the, either with the opioid epidemic or the, this poverty. Um, you know, it's pretty, there's some, a lot of people that are in pretty desperate straits. But you got to be careful saying that. You have to be careful with what you're saying. Is you know some of these people aren't. I mean, you want to say they're just fun, but they really are just not nice people. Right. And I know you'd say that, but mm -hmm. that's the fact of the matter. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're going to live in a community, you have a responsibility to that community, regardless of whether you're dirt poor or you're the richest man on the totem pole. You know, you, you have a responsibility to your to your community to live in, and be responsible and, and good stewards of yeah. your community. And regardless. be a contributor, not an extractor. I, mean, that, that, right. that, I agree with that 100%, but what do you do with the people who don't feel that way, who just don't care? Well, I'd be curious to find a community that doesn't have these kinds of problems and figure out what they're doing so that they don't have it. I don't think you'll find you a community find that doesn't have I've these worked all over the state. They're everywhere. Well, other states. <laughs> they're gated they're 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 communities. communities. Yeah. 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 You've got gated you communities, you can put it down. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Hattie has been waiting the Back area. Let's move on to the cemetery uh, commission proposal. Come on in, Patty. Take a seat. I'm happy to hear you. Oh, you're going to want to stand there? Yes, okay. okay. Well, we can hear you. So, can you give us a background on this proposal? And um, I mean, we we have copies of it here. But yeah, I do. I did bring. Just kind of wanting to. So I've been um, researching how other uh, towns deal with their cemetery commission, and um, I learned that. Um, I've only spoken with uh, Worcester and Callis that um, they have a full-time sexton. Well, not full-time, a hired sexton. And he does uh, like all the work that's not happening in our cemeteries. See, I go to other towns, I look at their cemeteries, and all the stones are nice, and it looks really nice. And then Woodbury, not so nice, like broken stones, you know, filtered stones. And um, so they look terrible, and it, it's, you know, the uh, obligation of the cemetery commission to see that they, the cemeteries are in uh, good shape. So I called this guy, uh, Joe Mangan, and um, he goes by Kirkyard Services. He comes super highly recommended from the uh, other towns. And he went out and looked at our five cemeteries. And um, I, did I send you like a quote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Thank what do we take to fix all the cemeteries, all the stones? Uh, it's like $30,000. He doesn't need to do that like all in one year. So I was proposing a um, $20,000 budget. 7000 goes to the person mowing that we're kind of stuck in a... Yeah. Kirkyard Services would take over mowing at that point, so we would be paying them. But, um, you know, so he, he would, uh, after the 7000 that would be 13000 going towards cleaning up our cemeteries, and, you know, I so said the total cost is close to thirty. Mm -hmm. And I, like the other towns I talked to, like Worcester has a $20,000 budget with one cemetery. We have five cemeteries that are spread out all over town. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I kind of got stuck in this position as chair. I don't know anything about cemeteries except I like to visit them. 
and I didn't get like a handbook on like what I'm supposed to do, so I'm kind of winging it. Mm -hmm. And people call me and ask me questions, I'm like, I don't know, like you can try calling Richard, he might ask, you know. It seems like Richard and Sheila take all their, their cards close to their chest and didn't really share what like the cemetery commission is supposed to do. Besides putting out flags. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm good at that. <laughs> but that's about it. Mm -hmm. So do you think this twenty thousand dollars would that be a yearly amount for, um or would it could it eventually um it, become smaller? It could probably once come smaller, you, small, you know, it depends. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me? And once we catch up with the repairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and um, some of that we're already paying in the mowing Does that cover both the town properties and it does. Is just a so we'd have to bid our own mowing Correct. potentially. Yeah. Correct. Um, so one question I have is this I know you know like the library trustees requested a, an increase in their budget of two thousand dollars. This is uh, significantly more than is this something that we should vote on at town meeting? It would be its own article. article. I think it would be its own article. article. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So yeah, 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 I mean, because either you're going to stick it in the budget or you have it voted on as a separate item. Right, yeah. I mean, going from $7,000 to $20,000, I would kind of want this to be something that would be voted on at town meeting where it's. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how long the budget's been, $7,000. I don't yeah. ever remember. Forever. Because right it. now, there's none of these services taking place, correct? Stone repair. No, no one's. Maintenance of no. the cemetery. Pretty and much that should mowing. be something that's being spent on that. I have to take out the trash. Like, the mower guy doesn't even do that. Oh my. So I have okay. to, like, lift that big blue bucket into my truck, and mm -hmm. hopefully someone's at the garage to help me unload it. Because hence the problem of finding volunteers to do all this yeah, stuff because there's too much Is that the only quote that you got? Was the one quote? He's the only person I know who does this and he does all the towns mm -hmm. and... But that's probably adequate to put a budget well, together. It, well, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't the town have a... a uh, but we would have to go to bid if the voters approve it. We'd have to bid it no matter what. But we have to get approval. For First we get approval. So I think it's okay. It's adequate for that purpose. Okay. He, I mean... We could hire him just to do like five thousand dollars a year, but you know, as the years go on, we're never going to catch up to have like really nice cemeteries in town. Right. I mean, I can I can actually help you out with that if you want. I know a lot of people that do that kind of work, being in the business that I'm in. Uh huh. I could might go get. I mean, if you get want some to, more bids, yeah. 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 But if you want to throw a number in, I think the number is good. We'll just. Mm -hmm. But it's got to, we got to put it to the town. Yeah. yeah. So can you, best Patty, can you broaden that just a little bit um, on the quote docs as far as him um, taking care of any burial? He'll redo the maps. The maps are very sketchy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at the town office that some are marked, beyond, some are think, not marked. I think, I think they're beyond sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Just having, nice. having, having, <laughs> having tried to deal with these know, already, up in Westwood, um, very, yeah. they, they basically, like at least so for he, Westwood, very where we've done some work, they, we have yeah. no idea. So he would take we have, we have no control idea over before. redoing all the maps. Right, so he, he, does, do, pay, he would do all the paperwork involved with burial, he would do the plot sales, like people would go to him, he would update the maps uh, and card files every year. And um, so, and in the in the purchasing policy, um, you know, we could put it out to bid, but we don't have to necessarily pick the lowest bidder. It would depend on the qualities of the of the, of the uh, bid quote, you know. Um, and this person sounds like they would do pretty much everything. So, um, but, but we would have still have to go. We would still have to. Oh, that one here. You have that food bids. Yeah. Right. Right. Determine well, you or you go out to bid if you only get one, right. then it's you can right. pick that guy. Yeah. I know him, and he's a go-getter. Just to throw that in there. You what? I know him, and he's a go-getter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, well, I wasn't Man aware. You know, that. you know, Joe Mangan. He bought our sugar oh. bush, and oh. he did a phenomenal job of like redoing the whole building. Like, he did amazing work down there in like less than a year. We saw his transition of what we had. And it was pretty amazing. He's been really nice to deal with, like, you know, prompt, like, called me back and came out and, you know, did bids, went to each cemetery, 
Uh, I have a more itemized thing, like how many stones he would fix. Um, mm -hmm. Like Buck Lake, you know, the fence there is like. Not right, but what, yeah, I'm surprised we have no budget for this now. I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable to have a budget for this. And even right. if we propose it and put it in the, the mm -hmm. town budget, mm -hmm. because I was unaware that we had no budget for repair of cemeteries. No, we don't have. We basically yeah. have a budget we have for a maintenance for the budget for the mowing. Well, I mean, I guess for me, it, I still would feel better if, if um, it was the town residents approved this, because um, it is a of a significant jump. I mean, a jump from what it yeah. has been. Um, it would be less sweat on our brow yeah, if people fine. objected to it. Yeah, that's how um, I thought it would be. I mean, yeah, I looked at last that. year's town report. <clears throat> as long as you're like, write up a little something to put in the town report of what yeah. it's, what's the money's for. Mm -hmm. yeah. I certainly don't object to No, I don't fix it. Oh, no, Rob. <laughs> Pat, one question. Oh. On his breakdown here, he's got a full burial for six hundred dollars. That's but then he also <coughs> has dig a green burial for eleven hundred dollars. So does that mean for that one burial it's gonna be seventeen hundred dollars? No, 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 no. Green burial is something um, the cemetery commission uh, still needs to adjust. It's something we're interested in having done in Woodbury. And again, like callous had the first green burial a couple of years ago. And so what is a green burial? It's just this jumping hole. Yeah, there's no casket. There's, there's no casket. No, no box. No, oh, you no. can have a box. It, it just, it just it you're doing it personally yeah. where, where, on your land or whatever, and it doesn't have to even be in a cemetery. Oh, okay. And you can, you can, you can, you know, you, Doug DeVosiers is, is really up on this, and he's, he encourages it, but he just said, it's got to be deeper than two feet. <laughs> yeah, that's why you get more money. It's a deep hole. <laughs> yeah. But in, in Callis, so they had their first green burial, and then they opened up part of the cemetery, and they sold 40, like they had 40 lots, and they sold them all for green burial. In Montpelier, has it? Montpelier. Yeah. Well, and Worcester is in the process of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll have this on the town. Yeah, we'll put on just, if you could write something up sure. about it, just so the questions would be answered. That's what I'm in favor of. So, good idea. so is that like the same thing um, that you write up like this year, the cemetery commission? Yeah, just put it in your, I would mm -hmm. put it in your cemetery it's commission in report. Regular report. So okay. here's what our funding request is and why we're requesting it, what it's going to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you. Um, That's it. So, yeah. 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 Okay, um, town office energy. Uh, um, do you want me to give a little background on, or do you need, uh, happy to give? You can you, do this spiel on the walkthrough. Okay. <clears throat> do you want me to do the spiel on the walkthrough? Okay. So, um, uh, this summer, actually it was early this fall. Yeah, it was this fall. Um, we contacted Efficiency Vermont to do um, what's called a, a walkthrough assessment of different town buildings. So the town office was one, the town hall, the town garage. Um, I think that was, think that was it. Um, so, and basically that was free to the town. Um, and the person that did the assessment um, made recommendations. Um, for the different buildings, um, and you know, the next step usually is to, um, op you know, for the town to agree. Uh, we're focusing on the town office at this point um, to have an actual I energy audit done of um, the building. I, I had that done to my house many years ago, and um, the Efficiency Vermont has a list of contractors that um, will do these audits. Um, they come and they do some tests on the building, um, and then they come back with um, recommendations for um, uh, addressing different problems with the with the building. Um, and it would be up to the town to. Um, I mean, we could do it all at once. We could pick and choose. It would, we could choose um, what would be done, and then the contractor would come and do the work. Um, in, in the case of my house, there was a test that was done um, 
it's like a big fan. It's something about drawing to there or whatever. And so they do a test before they do the work. They do a test after they do the work. And depending on the improvement um, from this test, um, in, in the case of my home, um, Efficiency Vermont helped pay for the bill. I don't know if they still do that or not. They're still in there. Yeah, I think they still for do. Insulation. For insulation. Yeah. Weather stripping. And, yeah, certain so, heat pumps, yeah. things so like that. So this would be having a professional contractor come through and, and, and scrutinize the building much more closely than the walkthrough assessment um, and then coming back with proposals to the town for um, tightening up the uh, town office. <clears throat> and so what we would... Um, I, Randy has been uh, contacting different contractors on that list, getting a sense. There's like a $200 fee for them to come and do the test. And then the, um, you know, the money that would be spent on um, following the recommendations of the contractor, that would be, again, on the town's dime. Um, and we would be figuring out wh whether we wanted to do it all at once or whether we wanted to just fix the windows or you know, whatever whatever is recommended. Um, There's no state or federal monies for that? There is, there is a, well, Efficiency Vermont, the money right. that you're getting reimbursed for is coming from the state. Right, right, right. I mean, mm -hmm. more? There, there might be more, I mean. Um, the first thing they make you do is this audit is for a couple hundred bucks. For, yeah, but for that they don't pay for that, they'll pay for parts of your upgrades that you need. Yeah, yeah. and we can explore what monies are. Does a building available. qualify for historical preservation funds? Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, it's an old schoolhouse. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Um, the windows, yeah. It, it, Those have been changed paint, out There's no double, already, anyway. nothing. Some of that can be a sticky wicket. Yeah, yeah. we could get into trouble with some of the modifications made to the building. Because like, the original windows are gone, they've shrunk them down, and this. Right. We have a yeah. left in there. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's worthwhile. We can pursue it. We're pursuing. So well, I think it's a good idea with the energy audit. Yeah. The yeah. 100 bucks. Can I just say, like quick a, side note, uh, sure. thanks to the work of Norm Enkin and Larry Eldred, this school mm -hmm. is one of the most energy yeah. efficient schools in the state. Mm -hmm. I think we should do that with the rest of the building. Yeah, we got a huge work for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrecking them yeah. for, for that effort. So. <clears throat> uh, we are looking at ways of fixing up the town hall so that um, it's usable year round. Um, and so eventually that would be on the docket for... Yeah. And that must qualify for historical yeah. preservation funds. Well, the problem with qualifying for historical funds is um, yeah, you have right. to do it the way... The way they want it done. Want it it done. So like changing out the window, you know those horrible windows in the town hall? We would have to live with those. Right. It, um, we would have to come up with a solution which is not as good as putting the windows in there for so it's kind of a mixed bag with the historical yeah. and my, my experience has been stay stay away because some of the features they want you to keep go against what you're actually trying to do i had a lady in newport they spent three million dollars renovating a building and then you walked up it was 20 below zero and they had this aluminum window from the 50s and it literally had frost on the inside you right. could scrape it she's sitting in front of it going like this and they Gave you money, but they made to keep that window, for example. Yeah, I, I had the same experience when I was part of Grace with the old firehouse in Hardwick, where that was on the historical register, and we had gotten some funding to fix up the building. But we wanted to change out the windows because they were equally as horrible as the town hall windows, and we had to do it a certain way, and it really didn't help Doesn't make a whole sense. Lot. Um, so, so, the so we'd have to weigh that, is my view. You just have to yeah. see it. if if the. They're going to give you a hundred bucks, but it's going to cost you two hundred bucks to meet their requirement. You know, the town office is not on the historical register, no. so um, we might want to leave it that way. I don't know, um, but the town hall is, as is the school. As is the school. So, two hundred dollars for an audit, and then we'll see what. Um, we need okay. a motion for that. Um, I'll make a motion. Okay, to the two hundred dollar audit. All right. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I should have said any more discussion first. But we discussed it. Okay. Right. okay uh, let's see. So town meeting. Um, I'm just bringing this up just so that um, we're kind of looking into what's going to happen for town meeting. Um, you know, I think most of us would really like to have a town meeting where people get together. Um, but the pandemic is getting worse. 
Um, so, um, and I know I, I got in contact with uh, the LCT about what, you know, just kind of getting a sense of what the state is thinking about with town meetings. You know, last year we weren't able to have one. We weren't going to start in ballot instead. Um, so this year, so far, um, there hasn't been any direction from the state, but uh, the Carl Andy, or the lawyer from the VLCT that I um, haven't actually spoken to, we did exchange emails, he mentioned that this is something that the legislature will be addressing as soon as they're in session at the beginning of the year, um, and that he anticipates that they'll have some direction for municipalities um, within the first their second week of January. Um, so just kind of wait and see. I think one of the things that we're concerned about is if, um, um, and last year we were able, usually if you a town switches from a town meeting uh, where decisions are made from the floor um, to an Australian ballot, that takes uh, um, the town body to decide that. So it would require a town meeting to decide it. Um, last year the legislature uh, gave municipalities the um, um, allow the select board to make that decision of whether um, to use the Australian ballot, and and we did. Well, and then they made it for us because they could only fit ten people in the room. Right. They, it really and wasn't they a choice. They funded it. They funded, they funded it. Yeah, they funded all the expenses. Um, so in this circumstance, it looks like until they change the law, which mm -hmm. they may do, we're kind of stuck with we're the live meeting. But they the may change meeting. it, yeah. which is going to be weird because. We'll be sending our town report well, that, out probably about the time there. That makes that's to the printers, you know, usually goes to the printers and you get it in the middle of February. That's the big the big question. It'll be a little um, weird. Um, you know, so and it's so do if we don't prepare for an Australian ballot and, and that's what appears to be the right thing to do, um, you know, we need to start preparing for that now. Um, well it only took it took a, a month. Took a month. Not even a month. It took like two weeks. Okay. For us to get L. Brown to do ballots, right. and and they mailed it. Okay. Um, as long as we can't actually do an Australian ballot vote unless they change the law. Exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right. Which would happen. Maybe we should just drag our feet a little Sometimes bit, in getting it, right. getting the report set up. So the, the town report, it's going to be no different. I mean, we're okay. going to set it up. We'll just set it up with the, just like we did last year with the warning. That's what we did last right. year because we didn't know this was going to happen. And then if they do happen to go Australian ballot, or they tell us that. We could. We could. I don't know if they're going to mandate it. We could. Then the ballots would have to be printed, yeah. and they would mail it out from there. And it, it took like two and a half weeks. It was very <clears throat> around. It's just an expense the town didn't budget for. Yeah. The other option, just a second, Mike. The other option is that we could postpone a town meeting right. to say summertime or something like that. That would. That gets tough. We need our budgets approved before July. Okay. Right. Yeah. So. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, the only question I have is, I, I know last year we did the Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. We had somewhere 300 we plus, had we had response. a substantial uh, increase over the, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say it was double, maybe even three times the turnout. At least double. Yeah. Double. yeah. yeah. So I, I guess that should be factored in because it gives those people who wouldn't ordinarily have the opportunity to attend town meeting. Mm -hmm to cast a ballot, which is a very important thing. I now, that being said, I also realized the fact of being able to sit down and have a debate is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, weighing everything, I, I think it's it's very important, the fact that you can get 300 and some odd people to cast a ballot, mm -hmm. opposed to 100 and some odd people casting a ballot. I agree. And, I, and I think that needs to be figured into the equation on mm -hmm. how you make your decision. Mm -hmm. Right. For sure, we would have to wait for the legislature to do something. Unless it's on our agenda for this town meeting for a town vote to make a decision to go Australian ballot for either elections, like Hardwick has elections are Australian ballot, Australian. but their town meeting is in person. I think all their funding articles are all Australian all ballot, Australian. too. So. That's the way a lot of towns are. They have a town meeting, but you don't really do anything at it. You just discuss things. I know, like, speaking on a personal level, I haven't been to town meeting since I had kids because there's no school that day, so I, mm -hmm. you know, I can't expect my kids to sit through a town meeting. Um, some, some do, some don't sit. I either. don't think my kids <laughs> You would not want my kids. They'll to shorten up the meeting, get the speakers. <laughs> so I, I think there's a great value to actually having a town meeting in person, but the Australian ba ballot also, there's a huge mm -hmm. value too. I don't know if there's a way that the two could both happen. 
That's yeah. what I would. Well, you got to do either or. It's either or. It's either or. Either or. Either or. Either or. Either or. Either or. Which it would be great for the people. You know, Jim's on crutches. He doesn't want to come into to the town. You know. Yeah, for but Tony. it's strange to lose that because I do think it's great to have the. Because right. right. what you wouldn't want is a floor vote, and then you got to wait to count the right. the paper ballots before so you can know what happened. So if you yeah. go Australian ballot, you can still have that meeting. One. It's what the Thursday night before the pre-town meeting. The yeah, pre-town meeting. You can uh, still have that with the caucus, town caucus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what we'd have to do if the town wants to make that a permanent change, we'd have to put it as an agenda item right. on this yeah, town on this meeting, town however meeting. it occurs, whether it's live or a paper ballot. I mean, and we could change to that if that's what people want to do. I, ideally, it would be nice to be able to have a town meeting where we could discuss, especially different issues that are up for a town-wide vote, where they could be discussed. But no decision would be made in the meeting. It would be made by Australian ballot. Um, Which and is, you know, the ideal for this year would be able to, to would be to do that. And we do have permission to use the gym um, for something like that. Um, and then also have have a remote access. I mean, if we could get this thing together where we could actually include people. I mean, there are a number of people that would like to attend these meetings. Um, let's say town meeting but due to the pandemic they they're afraid to do that they're um so how do we make a meeting like that accessible to those folks also um you know to me it's it does seem like having some kind of gathering to discuss our issues because there is one issue that um i'm going to bring up here that um i would really love to have a town-wide discussion of um, um and that's something that we can try to figure out, but we, um, sounds like maybe we might want to, well, well, again. I think we, we just drag our feet a little just bit wait and see, see what, what happens. happens. Yeah. But I think, I, I don't know what people's opinion, I put an article in, the, it's a real sticky wicket because other towns that have done it, it turns into a real battle. But that might have softened because they've had a year of mm -hmm. ballot voting. The, the other thing that happened. I know Callis tried it a number of years ago and went back and forth and didn't pass. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of other towns have, so I, I know a lot of towns that have done it just Australian ballot, the whole town meeting part of it is kind of people just don't participate. So it becomes, you know, and much, you know, much more. Keep getting smaller and smaller and more participation is better. I wonder if there'd be a way to, like, I would really hate to lose the town meeting. I think that's something that brings the whole town together and we need, like, more of that in the community. But it also really sticks for those people who have a there and mm -hmm. therefore don't vote. Mm -hmm. um, I just completely forgot. <laughs> I think, too, the sure was important, though. The, problem, the town meeting means we had 120, 130 people deciding there were 108 right. last right. night. Right, for everybody. So that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the, where the, 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 the still pretty straight. bad that only 300 vote when they mailed the ballots to everybody. That was a little bit of a yeah. number that stuck out to me. Yeah, yeah. 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 900 and some really voters mean you're privileged to vote. How hard is it to fill out a ballot and put in the mail? 700. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's pretty bad. 50%, that's pretty good. No, no, but you. Think if it was important, it would. Well, I just think about all the people that can't get the day off work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all right. of my patients that I see, they're homebound mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have a lot of opinions, yep. but can't get out of their house, and mm -hmm. that's the free time of the year. Yep. So, well, I know the town live town meeting has been going away. The and I agree with what she just said. Is I think when you've got people who are elderly who are very apprehensive about going out, sure. whether or not we we. Well, the the pandemic is not going to come to a quick halt like no, that. No. So I, I think it's important that, that these elderly people have the opportunity to sit down and cast a ballot where in a lot of instances they wouldn't attend mm -hmm. a town meeting. And mm -hmm. again, that being said, I, I do understand the importance of the actual town meeting mm -hmm. and getting together. Mm -hmm. but and I think you could accomplish that with a with a well advertised town caucus to discuss your, mm -hmm. discuss mm -hmm. issues prior to the vote. The Australian ballot. Again, prior to this, most places didn't mail ballots. You had to still go to a voting place and vote. That would be probably how it would go. I think that would be ideal to do that. Mm -hmm. But someone, someone's going to need to propose a language. I don't have language for that, of how you change what the town does. I don't well, know. But there's, I think the LCT, the LCT does have some. Well, stuff. maybe we should put that as an agenda item on our next meeting. Okay, and we'll get some more. That way people could come and bring input. Bring and input. And we'll put it sounds like table. everyone in this room thinks it would be a good idea to put on the ballot mm -hmm. as a, or let the voters decide, regardless mm -hmm. of how this year's meeting comes out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But something for the future. Yeah. So we can start working towards. I put this on the agenda to start this discussion and a good start. Um, so we'll keep it on and, and it sounds like I what's going forward. Good input. Yeah. Any other questions about or thoughts about town meeting and Australian ballot and all that? We're good? Okay. So the um, next item on the agenda is the Woodbury Elementary School. Um, and I just, in the select board meeting, um, you know, Brandy um, had asked about this special meeting on January 4th, and I think you also asked about town meeting. So I just, and I, I mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, I just wanted people to be clear that um, if we're going to be having a town meeting in the gym, um, we have to go by the precautions that the school has in place. Um, which uh, at this point is wearing masks. Um, so we'll probably have a couple bouncers at the door um, with free masks to hand out. If, um, but it's a sticky wicked issue because I've always wondered what happens in a, at a meeting where you have to let all the public in. If they refuse to wear a mask, right. you're going to violate statute. I always wonder how that works. Mm -hmm. And I'll wear the mask. I'm just saying, I, I, uh, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, I, I don't know the well, answer to if that. If we have remote access, um, that would. I don't know if it's problem. been adjudicated. I just wonder if someone says, I want to attend this meeting, and you say you can't come in, you're actually violating their rights. But, but if you want well, a meeting, then you have to wear a mask if it's worn that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. asked you the question. Right. To me, as long as everyone can attend that wants to attend, I'm good with it. Well, that's where having a remote uh, option would be helpful if people, you know, there are people that um, can't wear masks for different reasons. Um, so, you know, if. Um, if we can provide an option for those people um, to attend remotely, um, that would be the way to go, I guess. Um, so it, again, we're trying to figure that out for any of the town committee, commission meetings, and um, for these larger meetings too. And then another um, thing that I did want to bring up about the Woodbury Elementary School, um, when we were working on the present lease that we have for the school um, last uh, earlier this year, um, the school board asked us um, to con again to consider um, having a discussion within the town about the ownership of the school, um, passing that the ownership of the school and the grounds um, to the uh, school district, the Union School District. Um, and we, in, in those lease discussions, um, the Woodbury Committee did um, promise to bring that up before the town. Again, you know, it could be there's strong feelings on either side. But what I would like to have the um, town do is uh, to begin a discussion of transferring the ownership to the Union School District. Um, and I'm not advocating one way or the other. I just feel that the town should have this discussion, um, then the school district um, has reasons. It would it would make things less complicated. It was a pretty complicated process. Um, and the law did change, correct? That they if if we do this, they would have to sell us back the building if they stopped using it as right. a school. They that's using that's it. different than we made the decision to rent to the school. That was yeah. something new last year. Yeah. Well, no, actually, or the that, year before that was when, when we did the merger. We decided um, we did a agree on a lease. a lease. And that was a three-year lease for that. No, no, I understand that, but when we made that decision, I believe they didn't have the requirement if they closed the school to sell us back the building. It was, it was actually part of the... It was, okay. All right. part of it, yeah. So, um, as Paul was mentioning, if, if, you know, if we were to transfer the ownership to the Union School District and they stopped using the Woodbury School as a school, then um, the town would have the first option to uh, regain ownership of the school uh, for a dollar. Because um, the fear was you sell it to the district for a dollar and then two years later they sell it for half a million dollars right. to someone else and keep right. the money. So, and I'm pretty sure all of that language is still in place. Why can't the lease agreement, there was a lot of effort put into that with Norm and Patrick Flood, Norm Metkin and Patrick Flood. Mm -hmm. Why can't the lease agreement just be continued as written? I mean, it, why can't it? Could, it could. It could. I mean, uh, I think we're kind of making things a little more. This is that was a very clear document. Mm -hmm. it, it took it time, yeah, it and the long ownership long. of the of the school was remains part of the town. I mean, mm -hmm. and and 
I don't know why we have to mess with it. I, I, I think we should just leave it as it is. I, I think agree. it's a good document. Mm -hmm. Didn't that have to do with the desirability of the OSSU of keeping Woodbury open for them to have? There was something along those lines. It, it makes Sorry, the... Was that, was, it, wasn't there... So I, I'm trying to reach back to it because I know Steve mm -hmm. had some... Well, and, my husband had some... some opinions about this. I'm trying to remember what no, they were. But there was something about the desirability to, for the OSSU to have the ownership of that building in maybe slanting it toward keeping the school open. I, that sounds familiar to me, too, lines? but I don't know specifically. I don't, yeah. I don't think that's the condition at the moment. I think it's more that, you know, if they had ownership, they would feel, um, and I, I, you know, I, Anne's on the, the school district mm -hmm. board. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your uh, yeah, I'm. You know, I'm happy to hear what others have to say because I'm relatively new to town and I'm new to the school board, so I don't know a lot of the historical background. Um, but I can say that in my experience, so far working with the school district. So to be clear, I sit on the OSUED board, which is the elementary school board. But I'm the vice chair, so I also sit mm -hmm. on the supervisory union board mm -hmm. with all of the other reps from all the other schools. The executive in the district. board, right? The yeah. executive board. So I kind of see what's happening from both levels. And, you know, I think that the district, like any fear that the district is going to close our school, any, di any fear that the district is going to try to take things away from our school, in everything that I've seen, is the opposite. Like the district is looking out for the best interest of everyone and is trying to find ways to save money for each of its constituent schools and to make things more cohesive and more equitable for all of the staff and all of the children. So in my opinion, I think it would behoove Woodbury actually to show that we're, um, interested in participating in that reciprocal relationship with the district. So here, here's the here, inter-family at this uh, <laughs> Your dispute <laughs> must be interesting at dinner and Thanksgiving. <laughs> we just talked there last night, too. <laughs> uh, there's no reason that that is that cannot happen and it continues to happen. I mean, I, I, yeah. it, it's really about the ownership of the school and, 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 and particularly if, if, if the student population dropped to 30 or whatever, and there was a, a, a drastic need to, to merge our, our kids into another school. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're I think we're fine with what we're doing. And the and, and as far as the the the, the old Southwest Union it's, Elementary yeah. School District, whatever the letters are, uh, they they they're going to have to share anyway. I mean, I know I talked to Larry, and he's really keen on. I mean, it was interesting at that meeting we had in the school. Mm -hmm. And he was dead set against the merger, and then he realizes he's now in charge of all the janitorial staff around around the whole the whole OS Orly Southwest. And he, he said it's terrific because now all of those janitorial staff are, be, are being coordinated, and they can be moved around, or they can work with each other, and it really makes a difference. And I don't. It's, and I, it's saving the district and, and saving, the town and, taxpayers money. And I and I don't know why that can't continue to happen. I mean, there's nothing uh, you know. Per, the, 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 the lease agreement was really just to safeguard this, the school in case it closed. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, if, 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 it, if it was up to the union the, uh, to, to, to uh, engineer that sale and stuff, I, I, would, I, would, I would be sus suspect of that because um, I just think that, that should be a, a, town, a town decision and, and we should have the... Well, the only sale that they would initiate, I mean, if we um, did give over the school to the district, um, the only, I mean, the town would have the first option to buy it back, so they wouldn't be... You know, and that would be only if but it's complicated goes. because say a third party comes in and offers a lot of money for that building. They can't, they can't do that. They, they can't, can't do that. They that that's so written, that's I, written I, down. And I'm not advocating for position either way. I just yeah. I think that that's a really critical point, and if we are clear on that part of the agreement, and there's a strong sort of legal underpinning to our 
position of the town to be able to maintain this facility because I think that the school and the library are the places where our town can get together, right? I mean, it's the only place we have to gather. Um, so it's an incredibly important asset for our town. And I think that it should be looked at very carefully how we do this. Um, it's that spelled means, out in the, in the present lease. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah, so, as long as our, so as long as our ability to maintain the property is protected, mm -hmm. I don't see any reason <coughs> to not move in concert with the district right. you know, I mean, as far as facilities go. There, you know, I would like the town to have the same discussion that we're having right now. Yeah. Voters would need to vote on it because it was a pretty you know, resounding don't sell it right. last yes. time. Oh, we asked oh. for a show of hands and it was pretty it was yeah. pretty clear. Pretty clear. Yeah. So and they they would like something they would like a a town meeting vote to um who's they? The school district. Oh the supervisor you. union. So well, are you bringing this today, Michael, because of that ask from the district? Yeah. Well because okay. I promised to bring this up when we were working on the lease. Um, Which lease? The, the present lease. lease. The, present the, lease. the current one, it sounds so like. You're you're Norman, Patrick and, Norman Patrick and I worked for many months yeah, I know you to did. get that lease mm -hmm. um, the way it is. And I think it is a, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good lease. It yeah. Um, but while we were having that discussion, we were, you know, part of it was that, is that the Union School District, you know, other people from other towns were just feeling like Woodbury didn't trust them, and I think there was an element of truth to that. We, you know, we didn't want to give up that school for in the merger, and so there was a, a level of distrust, and, and they're kind of telling us, that, you know, you could trust us. They're they're sort of wanting that in a way. Mm -hmm. So I would just love to have this be a discussion <coughs> amongst town residents, um, with uh, maybe even a formal vote on whether the town should keep the lease and and keep remain owners, owners of the school and school grounds or whether we should pass it on to the district um, with the understanding of course that it was a lot of history that should be brought Can up. Can I just say one thing? Sure. I mean, I've been, I was on the both boards, the OSSU and the mm -hmm. Asian and the, and the Woodbury's for a lot, lot of years. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day what you have to remember, now that this is OSSU and you have Hardwick voting, you know, uh, Greensboro voting, mm -hmm. uh, all these towns. Woodbury is the elephant in the room. We're the most expensive school. We are not actually. We well, are not the most expensive but, school. But what I'm saying is, if you look at the at the kids, mm -hmm. teacher Has, ratio, they're gonna they're gonna vote. <coughs> they're gonna cut somewhere. So they, can they, can you move thirty kids easier than you could move? So my my concern but, is, if if you're gonna if you're gonna give it, let them have it. Which I don't think you should. Mm -hmm. Make sure that there's a stipulation in there that they don't close it down as a school, but they use it for offices or mm -hmm. school offices. Or there is a be there is decision. There is a stipulation. They give it to the OSSU. Yeah, there That's is a stipulation. It yeah. can't. It has to. If it's not going to uh, be a school where children come to to be educated, it, it, it can't just become the OSSU office building. Okay. That that wouldn't happen. What? No. Go ahead. I'm just wondering, what's the main benefit to Woodbury that's being stated for if we were to sell it to them? Um, well, it wouldn't it would be selling. Us. It would be. So right now the insurance is kind of, the town pays for it and the school mm -hmm. reimburses us. So oh. there's bits and pieces that the town covers, yeah, like a, a double protection reason. because it's our building sure. and our land. We're a landlord, so, essentially. So, yeah. Right. If, there wouldn't be that, or and the, there wouldn't be an expenses for maintenance that the town now covers because it is our school. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hear Brandy saying that there would be a savings to the town, but there's also a complicated logistical <coughs> <laughs> arrangement yeah, here yeah. in which, you know, um, including this building, including this yeah. building and the, the library, library and, and, the and the wetland. And the wetlands. The, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's very complicated. It's really complicated to manage and maintain these various scenarios of ownership and maintenance and who is in charge of what and who's paying for what from both the district and the town as far as I understand perspective. Mm -hmm. So the transfer would simplify it? The transfer I think would simplify those 
logistics, but it would also, um, well, it would do a couple of things. I think it would simplify the logistics. It would demonstrate to the district that we, that we as a town are coming to the table in, in a spirit of trust. Because I think if we're showing our kind of arm's length, like, uh, we don't know, like, we don't really trust the district to take care of our school, then the district is going to feel that and respond. I mean, and I'm not, that's not a threat. That's not like a ultimatum, but it's mm -hmm. just like the way the interactions are proceeding. I can see that if Woodbury comes to the table in trust and, and good faith, then the district will continue to respond that way. Have the other schools in the districts given the, up their schools? We're, we're, we're like the, the only, only, the only okay. one. We're the I only see. town in the state. Pretty much. I, I think, think there might be one, one other, other. There might be one other town. <coughs> so we're kind of an outlier in this whole um, thing, mm -hmm. and yeah. it does create some complications for. for and really, I mean, I will say this: if in Woodbury, we, our desired outcome is to keep our school operating as a school, work leaning into working with the district mm -hmm. is the way to achieve that outcome. That's what I was saying. And you know, as far as the building, you know, and for the expense for the school district, we have a an old building. It's over a hundred years old, but it's really it was built. You know, they didn't don't build buildings like that anymore. And the work that Larry Elgert has done on that building, that building is in great shape. Mm -hmm. And when you hear him complain about the Hardwick Elementary School or Lakeview. <laughs> They're sinking a lot of money into repairing those schools, which are um, so we're we're kind of golden here. Um, we aren't an, a big expense to a school district. There are a lot of younger couples in town that have children that are going to be in that school. I don't see it being going down to like 30 people in, in the near future. And we have a very unique niche here with the land and landscape around it that the the school district is taking advantage of. Um, yeah, what is the benefit to them was my question. Like, why would the OSSU care to own this? Why don't we have them come and answer that question? Because I, I don't feel comfortable in answering that's that a, for them. That's a great mm -hmm. question. Why do they want? Because that's the one that's the one little building block that's missing in this whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. Was why would they to, to kind of be free of the different complications and confusions. I think that's basically it. So they, they can feel free to, to really invest in the school themselves. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Right, because they don't have ownership. So, right. you know, for them to invest significant resources, staff, you know, we're talking about building an outdoor classroom for the school, which would also benefit the Woodbury community. Mm -hmm. We could potentially go to the OSSU and say, can you contribute? I'm not saying that you know, we should, but in situations where we have facilities improvements to our campus, we could be asking the district for support, and they would probably be more likely to give it if they had ownership of this school and the, you know, the property, whatever, three and a half acre property that surrounds it. Um, I would also say, based on my experience having a child in this school, and sitting on the PTO and you know being pretty involved in the school community that what Michael was saying about our school actually being increasingly attractive within the entire district is absolutely true. We now in this year have two or three families of Hardwick Hardwick families who are sending their children to Woodbury. What is the enrollment here? That was my next question. I can't believe you asked that. Don't put me on the exact number. Um, High 40s. Yeah, yeah we're like 48. Oh, yeah, just cool. shy of 50. And each year for the last three years that my child has been attending school here, our enrollment has been going up. I think Joel and Calder's class is like the biggest class there's ever been, right? Or like well, in, in the recent history, there's 120 yeah. kids here when I got here in '91. Right, yeah. and that's why we built this. Yeah. That's, why, that's why this was built. That's right. In one exactly. Weekend. And we and, it was and busting I'm, at the seams back yeah. then. You know, I'm coming to this with deep respect for those of you who have been here and done this a lot longer than I have, but. What I see, honestly, among my contemporaries, Peter's son, Alex, moved back here from the city, I see a, a new wave of back-to-the-land families 
who are looking for a meaningful rural experience for their children and Woodbury schools in our district can offer that. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason we can't get back to 120 enrollment in this town if we have the vision to do it and if we have the trust and collaboration and, and will to do Clean that. properties and not trash. Well, you can't really do it. I just wanted to bring our around. We haven't home that one enough, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so yeah, so this was on the agenda just to begin. This Good way. conversation, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Thank you. And, and I must say, I I think this has to be carefully looked at from I a town think, standpoint. I voted to look into this prop. You know, these these properties. Mm -hmm. You know, all all of this. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, no. We're unique in terms of what we have, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. um, I just I'm not dead set against it. But I thought the lease agreement was was well done and it, it protects us it does. and uh, whatever it have to do we have to do to placate the, the, the union um, we should look at it but in the meantime we should really study and, and examine all the moving parts mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think it's going to happen overnight this is going to take some time yeah. the, the question I have on the lease agreement which I don't even pretend to be familiar with uh -huh. is I understand it was several individuals worked on it a considerable amount of time putting this together. Mm -hmm. But has that ever been reviewed by uh, council to see yes. if in fact it's... Of course. Oh, okay, yeah. that was my question because yeah. that yeah. never came out. Yeah. We had to renew it, what, last year? This, yeah, this year. This is lawyer. Year. That's why we're bringing it up. Yeah. This is yeah. like yeah. three, three, three years. Yes, yeah, still it's due again. Yeah, yeah. it's coming here. We just did it's work. actually, it, it, it was annual, it was automatically renewed. For it was, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, there's an automatic renewal. I know we spent a lot of time on it. <clears throat> Yeah, clause in the in the lease. Um, so you can see we have two different. Not I'm, I'm not I want to go over and watch that. But I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's the dynamic. I think that that was a healthy dynamic. Well, it yeah. is. That was dinner table. It's okay <laughs> as long as you can disagree without being disagreeable. There was no so, food thrown at the table. No, that's no fun. Yeah, we're going to the hard rolls. Exactly. Yeah, right. We're going to the hard hard dinner rolls. So we could have a select board meeting where we invite people from the Union School District Board um, yeah. to come and make their case. And the administration. It. And the administration, yeah. Um, to try to do, maybe we'll do that after the holidays. Of, yeah, we don't need some. We got so. budgets to still finish yeah, before we got Christmas. So um, I just put this on for, like I said, the <coughs> beginning discussion, and I'm glad that we we had it, um, yeah. and we'll continue to, to discuss this. Um, and um, I guess, you know, we'll probably, from I think having a little bit more discussion, um, we can decide whether it should be warned on the. Um, yeah, we've got a little time to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I would like to know what the catalyst of it is. Right. So we should need, we should it would be good to hear from the, the Union District Board, I think, the elementary school board. And I would say if it's going to take longer than you know your the annual meeting or the vote or whatever, right. so it be it. does. Yeah, so yeah. be it. We agree. Yeah. I don't see there's a need to rush because we had a pretty emphatic keep the building last time. So we're going to change. I don't think, I think that's going to change. The voters yeah. definitely need to weigh in. It's not going to be on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for taking that into motion. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, so right. we're ready time. to go. Thank okay. you. Good night. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, next on the agenda, I just wanted to again. Um, we have got a pile of bills to review. Want to do that? Right. Yeah. Um, so Michael, did yes. you read the bids off? Uh, They're behind you. For the audit. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so we're going to go back to the town treasurer's report. Um, as you probably all know, who've been coming to the meetings, you know the select board has been discussing um, whether or not to, to go to a professional audit. Um, and we have, in the past, had town auditors that would do the audit. We're having a hard time filling that position. Um, we did, we did for this fiscal year. We did have two um, two people that um, volunteered to do the fiscal year uh, 21 audit, um, which is the fiscal year that we finished on June 30th of this past year. Um, so 
there are several towns that have had uh, similar problems with getting enough people to be in the town auditor. Uh, there's three positions. Um, for that. So they have actually gone to having um, professional audits done, um, which come with a price. Um, and we we have submitted, um, sent out an RFP, and then within a date that we had um, posted for a deadline, we got one bid, which based, one response which basically said that uh, we're, we're not going to consider your RFP. Since then, we have received two, um, two bids. Uh, one is from an outfit in Maine. Um, and I, ha you know, I haven't read it thoroughly to know what they're proposing, but the price was $7,500. Um, and then we have another um, bid that we received from Sullivan and Powers. They're based in Montpelier. They do a lot of town um, and city audits. And that was $23,000. Say that again? $23,000. Um, I know what we... For one year? Fire. Okay. Are there for one year, or Where? was it a locked in? Where? It was for Sodom, one year. Road and okay. for one year. Not your house. Um, and I you know when we we initially had looked into this a few years ago, um, and I know we contact the town of Woolcott has a, a yearly professional audit, and it costs them around thirteen thousand um, dollars. Usually, when, when you have a company that comes in and does an audit cold, um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done for that initial audit, and then you know, if they do it in successive years, um, you know, they've got different things in place, it's, it's much less time consuming. Um, so, and what we had thought was to, again, this is a, a town meeting thing that we're thinking of, is to bring, again, have this be something that would be worn for our town meeting agenda, um, again, for the town residents to um, approve whether or not the town switches to a professional um, auditor. Um, and I know our auditors in the past have kind of done, well, I would let, you know, Brandy, maybe you have a better, you know, okay. We, so it's usually we're kind of, it's not, not the best scenario. Um, so this is something that the select board has been discussing for a while, um, and um, so you can, I don't, you know, we would have to look at these uh, bid proposals a little bit closer to see what, like in this bid proposal, there was a cost proposal, and then there was a technical audit proposal, so what they're basically doing is telling us um, what they would be doing um, for the audit. Um, so you know, we have to kind of scrutinize the two that we've received. Um, chances are there's much less that would be done from the group that's in Maine. I would think dealing with all the grants and all that stuff, I would think you'd want to go with someone professional. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it does help. At, at this point, Brandy gets kind of raked through the coals yeah, I mean, with the different grants and stuff that we're doing from the state. Um, so if I, if I heard this correct, you got two, two bids. One seventy five hundred. Mm -hmm. That's the, other the one, one out of Maine. So yeah, basically, Maine. we'd be doing a lot of the scanning and sending it to them. Right. Uh, and the other one is twenty three thousand. Correct. Where they would correct. come yeah. into house. They would come in and actually work. Yeah. Okay. And they're so based in Montpelier. And, and you, I say you, that the select board sent out guidelines because when you yeah, have an audit, that audit, audit is only as good as what's requested of the people doing the audit. Yeah. So they both got the same. Documents. Right. I guess I, I I still don't understand why such a spread. Mm. Well, that's we have we have to look at what the uh, work proposal is from from these two bits to better understand that. Somebody it's the detail. And it's the the. So I can have somebody look at Nimrack and go, yeah, everything lines up, everything's there, but it's the paper trail. Right. You have a company coming in from some uh Sullivan and Powers, and like there's, you know, a journal entry missing, or there's, you know, it, they're gonna go through it with it. It's a, it's a, for, it's forensic. Mm -hmm. right. um, and that's the stuff I've, I've went to trainings, but we've never had an outside audit, no. ever, no. ever no. in the town of Woodbury. We had a minimal audit 
that was just on certain areas before I came in for a reason. Right. Um, but there's never been, and, and that FEMA, that store, they're going to come and ask me for an audit on that. Yeah. And yeah, I can show them like the books as far as in and outs, but there was a lot of transactions to do with that FEMA that I had no part in. And sometimes, that old store. Yeah, so sometimes it's I'm, just. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. It's, it'd be nice to have, uh, even if it was once every three years. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. A yeah. Thorough. Start from somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway. And an audit isn't always just about the the ledgers and the and the money. Sometimes, you know, with the audits, at least audit reports that I sat through they'll also suggest, make suggestions on how Total you actually yeah, keep, the, keep the books, how you keep the records. Um, but it's not only mine, it would be delinquency that would be audited, it would yeah. be listers that would be audited, mm -hmm. it's everything, everything within that office. The league doesn't offer small towns some assistance like that? Mm -hmm. I thought um, I well, I, you know, maybe, maybe there is some kind of assistance that a um, can ask, yeah. but not that I'm aware of. None that they've been willing to offer up so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they haven't. I'm surprised that VLCT doesn't have a group that will go out and do that. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, they they do have a body of lawyers that are work on a, as an advisory role to to the municipalities. Um, but not but as this, far as accounting, they don't. Not for this. Yeah. Not for the kind of accounting that we're. Yeah. Get a question: Is there a difference in cost? Being that you're not set up electronic, I mean, it takes some more time. What do you mean? Actually, oh, to go digital? Right. If you were digital, would that make a difference in the cost of audits? Yes, because there's always going to be a paper trail. Uh, I do not scan in. Yes, we have warrants that I print out from NIMRIC, but your select board orders are the original invoices, mm -hmm. the original everything. So digital could save in the long run money for I, audits. The select facility. board orders wouldn't be digital. The only thing that would be digital is the property transfers, property transfers the land and, records, yeah. birth certificates, death certificates, yeah. all yeah. the, the stuff that... The rest of it would still have to be signed. In for research, region. but not the accounting part. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so what branch of the town is the most complicated as far as an audit? Would it be it would the be highway mine. department? Would it be... It would be what I do and it, yeah. yeah it would be yeah. but it's all life. part it's all different segments coming coming to you correct yeah yes but yes. all of them would be so same with delinquencies it comes to me it all funnels to, you. to do the deposit mm -hmm. um, but that's where the audit is going to tell you or the CPA firm is going to say well now you should be doing it this way and until that system is set up and how they want it that's why it's going to be expensive the first year It's just security for me too. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, the, the whole town, really. I mean, yeah. This is. I mean, I've only been on the select board for a year, and this is this is the first conversation that we started having. We've been having it before this. Mm -hmm. So when you when you put this out, what were the guidelines? How far back are we going? We wouldn't. We would be going we, forward. We'd be just from this point forward. It's the best we can do for now. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and, and asking them, you know, we jumped in you know, December saying, you know, because we couldn't find auditors. We had no auditors. Right. No, I mean, they, that's, that's been why a the price. For, yeah, and it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah. So this would be for fiscal year 22, which is what we're in right now. We do, we have two town residents who are going to be the town auditors for fiscal year 21. Um, and which is, you know, the, the year that we've just passed through. We're actually, we're halfway through fiscal year 22 at this point. But, um, so this would be for an audit of, of fiscal year 22. Um, sometime next uh, summer or fall, I guess. Whenever. So. When you do that, is that going to require a lot of overtime for the, for the I have no uh, idea. current staff? I have I no idea. I think so. I don't think, yeah. No, we just step out of their way and they mm -hmm. everything's there. The binders are complete. I mean, it's the same thing I offer to the our auditors. I mean, you can look at it. You can look at, you know, July through December or July through November right now. Mm -hmm. All of it's ready to be audited. We've never been ahead of the game. No, 
So they're auditing last year's for this town report. So, so you know, what we're thinking is to have um, again this on the town meeting warning for town residents to approve um, a professional audit. Um, the larger, you know, looking forward, you know, do we want the town um, to approve having a professional audit? for professional auditors to do the books for every year and, and let go of our, our uh, town appointed auditors that we have a hard time finding people to, to take those positions. Um, so there's kind of two, two questions that are um, in, um, you know, so I, I don't know whether, you know, we, we could, in the warning, we could um, ask town residents if they would um, approve the town having um, the yearly audit done professionally, um, or with yeah, more cost, and more cost, yeah. And, and, and that's and, and again, you need to be transparent there because you need to say that with the current structure, the way it is, right, what it's costing the town for the quote unquote auditors to do the audit. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost anything. you anything. I'm sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything. There's no cost. Just like it doesn't cost you to have a select board. So what you're saying is... Excuse me? Say that again? <laughs> no, we still pay. It's just very... It's minimal. No, I mean, it, it's very... It's, 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 minimal, it's, 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 a very minimal, it's a minimal yeah. cost. Yeah. So John Reed right now, who's going to be doing the whole town report, and he's auditing all of my NIMRIC. He has access to full everything, just looking. Mm -hmm. He's not charging the town. Right. So I have one auditor that will submit at the end of this fiscal year, but we're talking maybe a couple hundred bucks. So what's the in, I guess what's the incentive to go where, from? What are they missing? Yeah. Um, people where don't want to do it. We missing? had to beg these two to come back in to do it just for this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. but they don't want it's. And they don't they, do it every day. Right. Right. I mean, right. it's not their job. So I mean, if it, it's like it'd be like me. Uh, right. It, it, you know, you don't have the knowledge of that. Look for. So the select board is going to make the determination on the seventy-five hundred or the twenty-three thousand. No. No. no, the town is. The town, the town is. So how it's do you vote on a, that? It's going to go. It's going to be a warning it's whether be the town on the wants town meeting, to um, ballot. So it'll be something that town residents vote. So it'll on. be two articles, not one. How do you pick? Well, them? that's that's the question. Whether we want to. I mean, there's two questions. Whether we want to uh, pay. Let's say. Let's call it twenty. Let's say. Let's say we. Um, We'll go with Sullivan Powers, so we would put $23,000. Would the town approve the expenditure of $23,000 to have a professional audit of fiscal year 22? That would be the a one question. Okay. And we could also have the other question, does the town want to continue having um, the audit done professionally in, you know, going, going forward um, and, and eliminate um, Electing uh, town oh, auditors every year. Mm -hmm. So the seventy-five, you're looking at us putting in a lot of time. Because you got to be fair instead of. I have to scan it. I have to, and that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Going to be asked out of us to link. Well, I, it, just us. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this this twenty-three thousand dollars. I am pretty certain. Um, I know last time when we proposed this and sent out RFPs. Um, it was for a three-year contract, I believe. For and, 18, and, I think, around and, 18. Yeah. 18. So the first year, it was a little bit more because there's a lot of groundwork coming into some someplace cold. And then the successive years, it did go down some. Not not a lot, but yeah, some. Yeah. You know, like Wolcott pays about, this was four or five years ago when I spoke to someone there. Um, they were at like $13,000 $13, a year is what they budget. For, and they have a professional audit done every year. Mm -hmm. um, so we could kind of look around and maybe find out what other towns pay. Um, Sullivan, who they use? Who they use? Yeah, I know that Sullivan. I was say, I did that, but I don't think I have it with me. Yeah, does a lot of different municipalities. That's well, they've been around for a while. They've been around for a while. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I'm sure in that quote they gave you, they're figuring we never had a professional yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. We're going to be. I yeah. know, yeah. 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 yeah, that's why it's probably a little, you know, a little. Yeah, I got that on. information at the office because yeah, I've yeah. called around to other ones mm -hmm. when we were talking about going out for this bit. Yeah, right. Well, that's what I got to read that. You know what I mean? Um, 
Good. Thank you for reminding me that I really didn't do that. That's going to be a little bit challenging on your part, how you write that yeah. article up on each one of those two. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get advice on how to word it properly. Yeah. Honestly, I don't think I would even consider the, the main person if it's going to, it's going to cut, you know, make these guys look like much more. You're going to lose right. so, overtime. Yeah, I think um, frustration. I think what we'll have on the warning is the amount that is in is in this proposal. Um, that would be a great topic for that that town caucus that we discussed. Exactly. Yeah. That would be a, a mm -hmm. primary. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything more about that? Any other questions? So um, again, yeah. So we'll kind of figure this one out and. Um, so I know we, we've kind of talked about this already. I put select board meetings on here again, um, and just mentioning that for future meetings here, because this is this room is leased to the school, um, and they pretty much have um, the say on how we, we, you know, we get permission to use the room. Um, and if they have a policy of asking people to wear masks, I think the select board will be requesting that in, in the future, and I'll. Put, that'll be in the agenda. Yeah, just when you want it, just make sure it says that. Right. And um, and again, you know, we talked about this also. We're you know we're working on some kind of hybrid meeting where people can attend in person or people can attend it remotely and um, try to figure that one out. We're we're getting there, I think. Um, and then um, I have an announcement. For myself as a select board chair, um, I would like to step down as the chair um, as of this meeting. Um, and then I also want to announce that um, I have, a, after town meeting day this coming year, I have one more year to my three-year term. I'm, I'm um, not going to fill that one year. So um, I just wanted to let people know that um, I'm, I'm on as a select board member until town meeting day, um, but I won't be uh, finishing out my three-year term at all. I'm, it's been eight years now, and I'm pretty tired of this job. <laughs> so it takes a lot of my time. Um, I have things I need to do at home, working on my house, and my wife reminds me of that pretty frequently. Michael, thank um, you for your service. You've done a pretty good job. So this year, when we when we elect, we're going to elect a three-year term and a one-year. Is yes. that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm, I'm you know announcing this now so that the town has plenty of time to to figure out who who might want to do that. Um, and then I just have um, one update um, that uh, the hearing with the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board for the uh, Northeast Wilderness Trust with the Woodbury. Wilderness Preserve, um, Newt um, pulled out of that hearing um, the day before the hearing happened. Um, they were getting quite a bit of flack from some different state agencies um, with some, and I, I'm not going to get into the details, but they just felt that it was better that they um, raise that $1 million elsewhere. So, um, so they, that hearing, they were never present at that hearing, so there was no decision made by the Housing and Conservation Board on their application. So they are planning on proceeding with the, with the preserve. I believe the closing is sometime this week with the EV Hyde. Um, and they'll pretty much you know, be the owners of that property and they'll um, be free to set up however it's to be used by the public on their own terms. So, but yes, Justin. Uh, how are we standing as far as the current use? Well, they had, they told us they told us that, that the land would remain in current use um, as EB Hyatt has had it forever. They, it's just a different category that they're able to use as a, a conservation. Now, is that based off state or is that based off the town? No, no, the town has state. the town has no state. say in current current mm -hmm. use program. It's a state it's program. Awesome. It'll be the same, so we would be receiving the same amount of tax money um, as on the property now. as we have been. So can I, can I, did you talk to anybody like Mike Cully or any of them guys from the foundation? You know, the, the guys that there was one of the guys that was here at the meeting. As far as what what happened on the state level is, our 
demands, I shouldn't say demands, or suggestions mm -hmm. that we put on that, mm -hmm. they looked at them and said, absolutely not. They, that's part of what they were, um, that they were encountering um, from ANR mm -hmm. and um, from um, uh, Fish and Wildlife, which mm -hmm. is part of ANR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, it kind of goes counter to what's happened in the state. Um, they just didn't want to deal with it. They yeah. said, so we're just going to buy it and do our own. Yep. Basically, yep. Yep. It's kind of a new thing, um, you know, for the state. Mm -hmm. um, there, there really isn't, uh, there's one small wilderness preserve. Um, somewhere in the southern part of the state that the trust um, owns. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a new, it's a new thing. Um, so, um, and there were other issues too. Yeah, um, oh yeah. So, um, yeah. So who's the new chair? Uh, well, one of, them, <laughs> one of them was dealing with a fire. I guess um, we'll figure that out next time. Um, or maybe, between here and next between time. Between here and next time. Yep. Um, any other business? Anything that anybody wants to bring up? Quarter of nine. I'm ready to go home. Right on time. <laughs> uh, do I hear a motion that we adjourn? Go ahead there, Michael. Um, all of the favorite. Thank you.